Good evening, race fans, and welcome to Volunteer Speedway. It's going to be Mike Marler on the pole, Kyle Larson on the outside, 50 laps to the checkered, and we are racing here at the Gap. It's just cool to have your name on a, on a cool event like that that pays really well and, and has you know, midweek with a lot, of, a lot of people watching. They work off into three and four. Owens looks to the inside of Larson. Larson up the hill, new second place runner. Off of turn four, Mike Marler takes the winner tonight at Volunteer Speedway. Vic Hill told us after the race, largest Bulls Gap crowd in 22 years. I feel like I see it being a lot bigger than even last year was. I look forward to continuing to do my part to help grow, grow grassroots racing. All the big names are here. Um, it's a backyard of some really good ones. Madden, Owens, Scott, all the boys. We got Kyle Busch racing. I'm sure the field's going to be even more stacked than it was last year. Working with different people, just being around different people in, in this dirt racing world has is, is certainly opened up a lot of eyeballs, so it's pretty fun when you get a chance to do that. King Kyle Larson, you know, it's his event. He hosts the damn thing. Can he come in here and whoop up on these regulars? Thursday, April 6th at Volunteer Speedway. Bulls Gap's the real deal for sure. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Volunteer Speedway for the Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge. We are here right off I-81 in Bulls Gap, Tennessee, again at Volunteer Speedway for what is the second running of the Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge. Dustin Jarrett here alongside Ben Shelton. And Ben, we have got a big boy field of 44 super late models in the pit area, man. And I tell you what, it is going to be a tough road to hoe for someone just to make the field here this evening, my friend. Now, I tell you what, I was joking with some of the teams. 44, there's 42 guys that can win the main event tonight. And the fans continue to pour into this facility on what is a warm, warm evening. Here you see the race information for the second annual Kyle Larson Presents Flow Racing Late Model Challenge. And it is going to be a like a, we run on our Castrol shows. This is going to be a fast-paced moving show here tonight, DJ. Absolutely. After Dirt Draft Hot Laps and Sunoco Race Fuels qualifying, we'll go into four eight-lap heat races here this evening evening where the top four drivers will transfer. We'll have two B mains. The top two out of each of those B mains will transfer. And then we will have our 50 lap $20,000 to win. Kyle Larson presents Late Model Challenge. We're right here one year ago. It was Mike Marler getting the win in a very, very highly contested event of the drone hovers over top of the Rumley pit area. There's a look at Kyle Larson's car. You see the Brandon Overton car just beside him. And just off the screen is the Brandon Overton backup car that Kyle Busch will be racing here this evening as we take a look at your volunteer speedway track facts. This is a super high bank. Four-tenths mile clay oval that opened back in 1974. Vic Hill has been at the helm of the promotions here for just about a year now and we are absolutely excited to be back. Mother Nature, knock on wood, has uh, played nice with us here the last couple days. We have got fans all over the grounds here at Volunteer Speedway. 76 degrees in an absolutely gorgeous day here today in Bulls Gap, Tennessee. Light winds, 10 to 12 miles an hour, and uh, the sun has peaked in and out of the clouds throughout the course of the day. And they have got this and ready to go. They've actually been practicing off and on for about the last month when Mother Nature is allowed here at the Gap, as you see the tier parking there along the back straightaway. Those fans on the back straightaway, they were here early this morning. A lot of NASCAR fans came up from Bristol, Tennessee. Of course, Bristol running on dirt this weekend with NASCAR. Those fans got here early this morning to get some of that tier parking and see not only Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch and Chase Briscoe, but the stars of the dirt late model wars as well. Of course, Jonathan and Davenport going to be running uh, with Spire Motorsports in the Truck Series this weekend. He's going to drive for Colleague Racing this weekend in the NASCAR Cup Series as well. As we take a look, the drone hovering over that tier parking on the back straightaway. That's the back stretch that you see. Those of you watching at home live on Flow Racing at the bottom of your screen that's just coming out of turn at number two is the scenic, uh, kind of the edge of the Smoky Mountains here in Bulls Gap, Tennessee. Again, those of you that are watching at home live on Flow Racing, we're glad Glad that you're with us. We're going to step aside for our first set of commercial breaks. This is the Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge at Volunteer. Dirt Track Fantasy Racing is here with Dirt Draft. With action from the hottest drivers across all major dirt series, put your knowledge to the test with Dirt Draft. 
Sign up, draft your team, and redeem points for hundreds of different prizes. And for the first time ever, you can be crowned an official series fantasy champion. You can't play all season if you don't play today. To play, just go to DirtDraft.com or download the Dirt Draft app today. Become a fantasy racing champion. Introducing the latest technology in the racing industry, Spring Rhythm. Spring Rhythm is an app that can replace a spring smasher, giving you access to the same information the fast guys are using to stay ahead. The app tells you where to set your coil overnights to hit your install loads and tells you the dynamic loads that the car will see in travel. It also simplifies adjustments at the track, giving you the information needed to adjust loads without taking the shock off the car. Spring Rhythm has been rigorously tested to ensure accuracy. There's no excuse to not be using Spring Rhythm. Located in Parkersburg, West Virginia, Dave Posky's Performance Parts is the premier parts store in the Ohio River Valley, housing all of the world's top name brands in motorsports. Dave Posky's Performance Parts is also home to Octane Race Products and Hoosier Tire Ohio Valley. And rest assured, we have what you need to get you on the track and into victory lane. Ordering is fast, easy, and simple, and can ship directly to your doorstep. Visit Dave Posky's Performance Parts online at posky.com or give us a call at 1-800-430-RACE. Dave Posky's Performance Parts, serving the Ohio River Valley and racers across the country since 1978. Gentlemen, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Volunteer Speedway here in Bulls Gap, Tennessee. As you see the line of people, a massive line, two massive lines of people waiting to come in. And there is a look at the massive banking just off of turns three and four. It gives you an idea. It's a great drone shot right there. Those of you watching at home on Flow Racing, that is a great shot to show you exactly how high banked the corners are here at this four-tenths mile oval again, located just outside of Bristol, Tennessee. Tennessee right off of Interstate 81 and as long as that line of people is to get into the racetrack there is a line twice as long all the way back to the interstate and even we're getting reports of cars lined up on the interstate to get on the grounds here at Volunteer Speedway. Cars are starting to make their way in the staging lane right now. Sportsman hot laps will be up first. Those are some of the sportsman cars. You see that blue 3D of uh, Dakota James Smith right there, the second generation driver, Steve Smith's son from uh, just outside Knoxville, Tennessee. Raccoon Valley is what Steve said he calls it. And he is one of the, one of the about 20 20 or so sportsman cars that are on the ground. There's a look not just at the crowd, but if you look in the upper left-hand side of your screen, you can see the line of traffic waiting to get in here to Volunteer Speedway, an absolutely packed house. Expected here tonight, you saw a shot of the grandstands and the number of people here. Still some seats on the bottom rows. Uh, still a few seats back on the back straightaway as well. But for the second year in a row, Vic Hill and team, just an absolute home run here at Volunteer Speedway. Again, with Mother Nature playing nice. There's a look at the mountains in the background as well as the parking. Look at that parking there on the left-hand side of your screen, wrapping around the grandstands here at Volunteer Speedway. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal effort by Vic and Krista Hill and all the folks here to kick off uh, the biggest late model race of the early season here in this part of the country at Volunteer Speedway. Again, we're glad that you're with us, those of you that are watching on Flow Racing. If you know someone that is not a Flow Racing subscriber, man, oh man, now is now's the time to let them know to uh, to get a Flow Racing subscription. is about $150 a year. We'll get you all access to every single event here on Flow Racing throughout the course of the entire year. We've got tons of late model specials, just about every event from Eldora Speedway, all-star sprints, USAC Sprints, the Spring and Southern Nationals Late Models, the Comp Cams Late Model Series, and a whole lot more. Again, more information at flowracing.com. Cody Early, speaking of the Spring and the Southern Nationals, Cody Early, the former voice of Volunteer. We, are we allowed to say former voice, or do you still consider it? 
Is former the right word? I, I don't even know if you're old enough to be a former voice or not. <laughs> well, I definitely haven't been doing it long enough to be a former, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, we're, uh, glad, we're glad that you're here, man. We're glad to welcome you with us. You do a phenomenal job on the spring and southern nationals. You're going to be calling the uh, you're going to be calling the sportsmen tonight. And as, uh, as my good friend Ben Shelton, uh, he runs around not only announcing but managing this event. We may bring you in to help call some of the action here this evening as well, my friend. Good, because it sounds like this is going to be my only fun I get to have this weekend <laughs> with the announcement of with and Taz will getting postponed. So uh, looking forward to it. As, as you've mentioned, Dustin, we've got a full pit area, not only with our super late models, but we have got a ton of sportsman crate late models this evening. As we get ready to roll out, they will have their hot lap session now for the sportsmen. Create late models. They'll come back for a qualifying session. They'll have four cars at a time on the racetrack, and they'll qualify. So normally, we've been used to hot lap qualifying here at Volunteer, but they're going to get the chance to come out, test the track, first official race that is actually counted in 2023. So this will be the first time race cars have been on the racetrack in competition form, and the combo late models, as they call, which will be a weekly division here at Volunteer Speedway and of course that'll be something that comes up on April the 29th when the weekly programs get started. Josh Barry Prophet have came in to help out with the weekly racing program. Details and more you can find out at volunteerspeedway.com. All right, race fans, the combo late models with the sportsman late models and crate late models will be out onto the racetrack. Some of the drivers that you're going to see would be the driver entering turn one right now, a previous track champion out of Johnson City, Tennessee, the Hendrick Power TNT, three of Tim Moppin. Tim Moppin in the three. Once again, just simply hot laps for the sportsman late models. Wayne Raider in the 01. And Wayne Raider's going to loop it around just over there at the entrance of turn number three. So the caution is going to come out. Still a little bit of slime on this racetrack. And there you see on your Flow Racing camera already some damage to the right rear of Parrotsville, Tennessee's Wayne Raider. Multiple wins here over the last two years for that 01 in the Hux Motorsports Team Husky 01 machine. Looks like he looped it around when he got on the throttle over there in turn number three. There you get a really good look. He's got a flat right rear tire as well. So not the way he wanted to start his race racing action this evening. Another driver out on the racetrack will be the driver over here in turns one and two in the 07 out of Knoxville, Tennessee, the Crate Engine Technologies Longhorn 07 of Addison Cardwell. Addison Cardwell in the 07. The four car on the front straightaway would be out of Moss on Tennessee, the TNT chassis. That'll be Chase Lawson. Chase Lawson in the four. 
In the 3D out of Powell, Tennessee, the son of legendary super late model driver Steve Smith, Dakota James Smith, and the Phantom Longhorn housing material surplus Rick Welch Racing 3D. There you get a, look, a good look at the 3D of Dakota James Smith, second generation driver. One of our sportsmen, great late model drivers here this evening. Another driver on the racetrack right to see there, the 13 out of White Pine, Tennessee, the Eagle Powered Black Diamond, Insane Hot Rods, Black Label Coating, 13M. That'll be Dylan Morgan. Dylan Morgan in the 13. So first group of sportsmen, great late models, the combo late models that they're calling them in 2023. As I mentioned, one of the weekly classes that will be performing along with super late models, open wheel modifieds. Also the street stocks, classics and front wheel drives will be a part of the 2023 weekly racing program here at Volunteer Speedway. Check it out, race fans, for the folks watching at home on Flow Racing, an amazing view and what has been a beautiful afternoon so far and a good look at the packed pit area, packed grandstand starting to fill up. Race fans, we thank you so much for spending your Thursday evening with us here at Volunteer Speedway. Whether you're here in the stands or at home on Flow Racing, welcome to the Gap. We do want to thank the folks at Winner's Glow Car Wash at 2535 East Andrew Johnson Highway, located right beside Lowe's in Greenville. Got to give them a shout out. You want to wash the dirt off your car after tonight's racing festivities here at Volunteer Speedway? Go by Winter Glow Car Wash on the East Andrew Johnson Highway right beside Lowe's. So there you see the three of Tim Moppet making his way into the infield. As they're having some trouble right now, yeah, there you get a good look at Wayne Raiders 01. What it is is he is backed up against that infield concrete barrier, so they can't get him pushed out. They're going to have to bring the tow truck out and get him pulled away from that infield because they can't get one of the four-wheelers or the side-by-sides behind him to push him out where he is. So they're going to get the tow truck over there and, and pull him away from that infield barrier, and we'll go back to our hot lap session for our combo late models.
Once again, welcome back to Volunteer Speedway as we wait on Wayne Raider's car. Got turned around just about the time we hit the green flag here in our hot lap session for our combo late models, which is the combination of the Sportsman and the Crate late models that they have put together for the 2023 racing season. A little bit of slime still on the racetrack. Get a good look there for the folks watching at home on Flow Racing. Tore the right rear spoiler off of that car. But unlike a normal weekly race here, hot lap qualifying, tonight they're getting a solo hot lap. And then they'll come back for four cars, two laps for their qualifying effort in just a little bit. So hopefully the team can get things dialed in for the driver out of Parrotsville, Tennessee. Sharp looking new wrap. That's a new style on that Wayne Raider 01 machine. A lot of people look at that and it's almost identical to the 01 of Jason Welshin. But a new wrap, new numbers, still got the bird on the hood. I like the Trans Am bird, that's just unique. So we'll see if Wayne Raider, he's gonna make a left-hand turn. He does have that flat rear, right rear tire, so the team will have to go to work on that car. Track looks to be cleared back off. We'll get track personnel off the racetrack, and we'll go back to green here in our hot lap session. Group number one for our Sportsman Crate Late Models. There you see Addison Cardwell in the 07A. Plenty of victories over his career here at Volunteer Speedway. Multiple different rides, too, for the driver out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Dylan Morgan in the 13M, a driver out of White Pike, Tennessee. Eagle powered black diamond for Morgan. Once again, simply a hot lap session for the combo late models. They're going to get to test the track just a little bit. They'll come back after super late model hot laps for their true time trial session. And their feature will come up, of course, tonight right before that 50 lap super late model main event. The four car, that'll be Ryan Smith at a Rogersville, Tennessee, the Eagle powered rocket, Rogersville seamless guttering, Dalton direct carpet number four. Love that shot coming down the back straightaway, entering turn number three. A good look at these cars, especially when they come off of turn two. These turns are extremely wide here at Volunteer Speedway, but things get really narrow in a hurry once you come off of turn two and once you come off of turn four. You'll notice that throughout the night. Everything kind of funnels in once you hit those straightaways. And you'll see a lot of action, especially off the turns here at Volunteer Speedway, as group number one will make its way off of the racetrack for their hot lap session. So we'll get ready for group number two to hit the racetrack. First car on the racetrack out of Dandridge, Tennessee, the Warrior Overlook RV Park. Rev it up racing. Gannett appraisals. 33 of Warren McMahon. Warren McMahon in the 33 car. Another one of those drivers, a regular here at Volunteer Speedway. Of course, one of the drivers, as we mentioned, with the combination, putting the sportsman and the crates together, be interesting to see how he fares throughout the season as he makes his way into this combo class. Behind him out of Greenville, Tennessee, in the three, that will be Shane Starnes. Shane Starnes in the rocket, log cabins for less. Alpine building and contractors, number three car of Shane Starnes. Works just off of turn number two. Third driver out on the racetrack will be the driver of Heath Alvey in the 7A. Heath Alvey in the 7A car is once again simply a hot lap session for our combo late models. Green flag's going to come out in our second group. And there you see Heath Alvey. You mentioned him just a few minutes ago. Do you see that unique line he took down in turns three and four? That's more of that traditional line. We'll see if he makes that angle again down here in turns three and four. No, he'll go through the middle to the top side. That bottom line for years here at Volunteer Speedway, that was just the line down in turns three and four. Vic Hill's done an amazing job of widening this racetrack out, really bringing that top side to life. There you see the 10B. That'll be Bradley the Welling. 
And in the seven, no, you'll have to look twice, but that is not Ricky Weiss. That is Matt Thompson. Matt Thompson in the 27. It looks like a seven, but there is a 27 on there, they're telling me. That is a car that won at Bristol just last weekend. Matt Thompson getting a crack inside of Ricky Weiss's number seven car. And there you see him already almost three wide off of turn number four. Hot lap session number two starting to wind down. So they will bring out the caution flag for group number two. Unofficially, Heath Alvey went 13-7-2-4 to Warren McMahon's 13-8-9-2. Take a look off for turn number two at that packed pit area. Race fans here tonight at Volunteer Speedway packing into the pit area, still filing in, still filing into the racetrack. Is there you get to see that beautiful sky in the infield pointing towards turns one and two. So two groups of our combo late models have hit the racetrack for their hot lap session. They will come back four cars, two laps for their qualifying time trials that will come up in just a little bit after the super late models run their hot lap session. And Cody, when you say combo late models for the folks watching at home, give them that that 20 second elevator pitch as to what the combo means. Uh, simply the sportsman late models and the crate late models stuck together. Last season, they were two separate classes. They combined them. The sportsman late models, when it comes down to the shock package, they had to run same shocks all four corners. Well, that's changed this year because they've combined the rules. Sportsman guys kind of said, you know, I don't think that's going to work out, but we have some fast hot rods in these Sportsman late models, and we have some of these drivers that can turn some laps here. So it'll be interesting to see, especially if this track slicks off tonight. Be impressive to see how some of these super late models or these combo late models work their way around the racetrack. There you see one of the best to turn laps here at the Volunteer Speedway. That'll be Gary Crittenden, the driver out of Mohawk, Tennessee, the Eagle Powered Rocket. Plenty of laps around the gap for that 18 car of Gary Crittenden. Final group of combo late models for their hot lap session. Super late models, super late models. Your hot laps are next. This racing surface here at the gap over the last three months, it has been solid. It has been as smooth as I have seen it over the years. There you see the 30. That'll be Taylor Kaufman at a Bean Station, Tennessee. He was the final late model asphalt champion at Newport Speedway before they closed the doors. And when they closed the doors, he came to the dirt side. So interesting to see how he continues. And he's been doing pretty good for himself on the dirt side of things in that 30 car. The 11, that'll be Tim Bounds. Tim Bounds in the 11. Still seeing this racetrack widen out here in hot laps. Normally everybody kind of single file, works their way around the racetrack, not right now. Oh, and Tim bounced hard right front into the turn one fence, and the 11 is up into the turn one fence. Did not see that right away. And there is a right front spring rolling down the straightaway as well. So a hard hit down here in turn one for Tim Bounds in that 11 car. So the Knoxville, Tennessee driver, the Hendren Sting Warrior. Yeah, that, that was a... Half of a Stinger and half of a Warrior put together. So a Sting Warrior is what he told me he called the car. And right now, track crews are going over there to work on the 11 of 10 bounds. As there you get a good look, aerial view of the drone shot in turn one. And you, you get kind of an idea of the banking here at Volunteer Speedway, Dustin. Yeah, you're right, Cody. And, you know, we saw that great drone shot from the other side of the racetrack from turns three and four earlier. We can see just how high banked those corners are. And you're right, that's a great shot right there. Probably still doesn't do just, you can see the track worker down there, how he's almost had to kneel as he worked his way around to the front side of the race car to get it hooked up to the back of the wrecker. Man, extremely steep banking here at the Gap. And that is one of the things, actually, Probably the biggest thing this place has become known for. Yeah, and, and it's just this area. You talk about racetracks in this area, and you want to talk banking. You start here, you go to Tazewell, uh, you just talk about the racetracks. I know everybody says East Tennessee's known for Bristol. These dirt tracks in this area, they have some serious banking too. And to see somebody that has never been here, 
come here for the first time, it's pretty amazing. You go across the state line, uh, just on up I-81 as well, go to with, uh, Withville, Virginia, to the With Speedway. Uh, you talk about a high-banked racetrack there. I always said it was almost like uh, it's almost like Bulls Gap and West Virginia Motor Speedway had a love child, and that was uh, that, that With is what spit out, man. And it is fast. Yes, it is, it is, it man. is fast. Fast and scenic. I tell you, one of the uh, one of the prettiest sunsets in all of racing off that back straightaway there at, uh, at With, man. Uh, you got the mountains in the background, the sun setting, a gorgeous place. It's a shame that uh, Mother Nature not gonna not gonna play nice at uh, with this weekend, but uh, hopefully an opportunity to come come to that gorgeous racetrack a little bit later on down the road. Yeah, we'll be there come July for sure, hopefully. But uh, looks like with Tim Bounds incident down here in turn one, that will end our combo late model hot laps. They'll come back four cars, two laps at a time, coming up in just a little bit. But Dustin, it's time for super late models at Volunteer Speedway. Well, thanks a lot, Cody, as they get Bounds Car hooked up to the back of the wrecker. Next up will be Dirt Draft Hot Laps. For the super late models here this evening, once again, 44 late models signed into the grounds here tonight for the Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge. And as they get Bounds Car hooked up to the back of the wrecker, we're going to use this opportunity to step aside and thank some of our fine marketing partners. This is the Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge at Volunteer Speedway, and you're watching live on Flow Racing. Since 1958, Winner's Performance has been crafting the strongest, most reliable driveline components available, and we've been building them right here in York, Pennsylvania. Winner's Quick Change Rears have equipped some of the winningest teams in history, and night after night, weekend after weekend, we're right there with you in the pits and in the winner's circle. So when you're ready to step up to the best Quick Change Rears and driveline components around, step up to Winner's. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge from Volunteer Speedway. You're watching live on Flow Racing or here on the grounds. And uh, that is just a partial look at the crowd here. They are still lined up to I-81 waiting to get in. And the Super Late Models have made their way out on the track for Dirt Draft Hot Laps. Ben, Dirt Draft, as always, coming on board and sponsoring Hot Laps again. I don't know if they're giving away free T-shirts for new subscribers tonight, but you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. Free T-shirt. If you are a 
new subscriber, free t-shirts. Use the promo code Flow Racing. They'll ship the t-shirt to you. If you've not yet done so, lock in your Dirt Draft Fantasy lineup here this evening. The first driver leading them on. There's a look at the graphic right on cue at the it. bottom of the screen. And the first driver on the track to lead them out, Ben, is a driver that just picked up a win last week in the number 49. He's going to run both the truck and the cup series this weekend. That's Superman Jonathan Davenport. Yeah, no stranger to victory lane here at Volunteer Speedway. He's even car 49, the Nutrient Ag Solutions Longhorn behind him. Another Longhorn, the number eight car. That'll be Kyle Strickler. And Strickler's got a teammate here tonight, DJ. And that's going to be Chase Briscoe from the NASCAR ranks. But that's Kyle Strickler on your screen in car number eight. Behind him in car number 99. That's going to be Cameron Marler, the Winfield, Tennessee driver. And I tell you what, what a field of cars. How about the driver behind him, DJ, in car 89? It'll be Thug Nasty, Logan Robertson, and the Broadneck Shaker Racing number 89 entry. Picked up a crate win in the 17 car, the family-owned car, just last weekend. He'll be followed out by the driver out of Great Court, South Carolina, in the 44. It's Chris Smokey Madden. And as always, a good start to the year for the driver of the Franklin Enterprises entry. Ross Bales out of Clover, South Carolina, behind him in the 79. A few other drivers on the track making his first ever appearance here at Volunteer Speedway in the SSI Motorsports 20RT from Chandler, Arizona. That's Ricky Thornton Jr. Mason Ziegler making the trip down from Chalk Hill, Pennsylvania in the 25Z. Shannon Babb out of Mooika, Illinois in the 18. That's Kate Loudy. Yes, that is Captain Kirk's son, Kate <laughs> Loudy. Now 18 years of age in the one. And Tanner English also on the track. Out Tanner's of first time here. His first time here yes. as well. Terry told me back in the pits that he has run here several times before Tanner's first time here behind the wheel of a race car. Well, get them dialed in and time's up on the board again. Dirt draft hot laps. These drivers will get them dialed in. 44 signed in, 44 super late models battling for $20,000 here tonight as the first wave of cars will make their way back to the pit area. We talked about Ricky Thornton Jr. Current Lucas Olayman Dirt Series points leader on your screen, Tanner English. World of Outlaws Rookie of the Year last year. Now in that Viper Risk Management 96V. As they're going to head down, some of these drivers heading to the scales to see where they weigh in. Next group of drivers, Ben, will be making their way out on the racetrack shortly. For those of you watching at home, they are going to get timing and scoring up on the broadcast for you here momentarily. As, uh, oh, don't hit the ambulance, honey. Easy. No, no. <laughs> Spare the ambulance. Next wave of drivers have made their way out on the front straightaway out of Newport, Tennessee, this weekend, sporting the autism yes. awareness in the number 20, the Tim Short Auto Group, Reese Monument Company entry. That's the Newport Nightmare, Jimmy Owens, behind him. Now at a Monterey, Tennessee. Tennessee, formerly out of Headingley, Manitoba, Canada, in the G-Style Transport. Turk Enterprises, number seven. That's the sniper, or that is Ricky Weiss in the sniper chassis. You had the right idea. You just mixed it maybe, all together. we can give him a nickname. We can call him the sniper. Nope, not going to do it. No, okay. All right, out of Mount Airy, North Carolina, Benji Hicks in that self-built double nickel race car right behind Ricky Weiss, the 55 in the middle of turns one and two. And behind him in car number 97, that's going to be Michael Chilton, the Silviza, Kentucky driver, Coming down, trying to pick up 20,000 here tonight at the gap. And the driver, they found a lot of speed late in speed weeks, rolling past the flag stand, DJ. Yeah, picked up four. He's already got four wins on the season this year behind the wheel of the Rocket Chassis house car, the Valvoline Swaybert Calf Ranches. Number one, that's going to be Hudson O'Neill out of Martinsville, Indiana. And he'll be followed out by the driver of the 1G. That's not Ryan King. Ryan King is here in his own entry. It's going to be Rusty Bollinger behind the wheel yes. of the Mike Knuckles Warrior number 1G. Yeah, it's a crazy stand out making the move up into the super late model ranks talked to him and his dad in the pit area earlier as drivers continue to make their way out onto the speedway newport the, tennessee's yep. josh henry right. ben behind of him and that pro built powered savage race car a lot of wins last year for the driver of the b double zero he'll be followed by the driver of the 23 heartbreak hotel for him last year out of loudon tennessee that's going to be corey hedgecock in the 23 corey hedgecock off to a fast start to the year and those bmf race cars this team build those also on the racetrack in this that stormy scott made his way out the las cruces new mexico driver del mcdowell out of chickamauga georgia the shot 
stop right up the road in Mooresburg, Tennessee, though, in the 17M. And you see Hedgecock on your screen as working around the low to middle part of this racetrack in that 23. And he's been awful fast in those self-built race cars so far this year, DJ. Yeah, he absolutely has. And again, uh, runs very, very well right here at Volunteer Speedway. There's a look at Stormy Scott in the Messina Valley Transportation Rancho Milagro. Scott Brothers Racing number 2S ran into his crew chief, Jason Durham, in the pit area a little bit earlier on this evening. Those guys were a little bit on the fence about whether or not they were going to make the trip. Saw Mother Nature was playing nice and decided to make their way out to Volunteer Speedway as we've got Dirt Draft hot laps up on the screen for you on the left-hand side of your monitor. Jonathan Davenport, the quickest right now with a 12.777. Kyle Strickler, second quick, third quick. Uh, Cameron Marler in the 99, Logan Robertson fourth quick, and Chris Madden right now fifth in dirt draft hot laps. And there's a look at Superman, Jonathan Neport. Uh, lost a little bit of weight here over the last the few months. Improved. JD, the new and improved. <laughs> yes, the new and improved. Jonathan. By the way, have you got a chance to watch Dirty look, Dollars? Right there, right on key. There right he is. Key. Have you got a chance to watch Dirty Dollars? I have not. Yet? I've been too busy getting oh, ready so for good. races. Really good, man. It's about 40 or 45 minutes long. Uh, they take you on the ranch there where Jonathan and Rachel live, and uh, it's it's cool, man. It's very, very well done. The uh, the films team at Flow done just a phenomenal job with that. If you get an opportunity, again, it's only about 40 or 45 minutes. Well, well worth your time, though. Very, very well put together piece, and absolutely as good as anything that you might see on Netflix or Hulu. Well, I, I've heard a lot of people rave about it. I can't wait to watch it as the next set of cars come out. And they're led by downtown Michael Brown out of Lancaster, South Carolina, the Blackcrest Farms Rocket XR1. And behind him, you talked about it, DJ, in the family owned number 30. That's Ryan King out of Seymour, Tennessee, and the King Motorsports, Brian King Roofing, Vic Hill Powered Warrior. He'll be followed out by the driver we like to call Big Perm. We can't give him credit for that nickname. That was uh, Turbo that uh, gave him that nickname. <laughs> it's both those drivers on the track. Big Perm, it's Dalton about Wilson. about the ambulance down here in turn four. Oh, I mean, the ambulance turned on a good you're lap. You're going to turn some laps down yes. here in turn four. So Dalton Wilson in the 18D in the uh, <laughs> James Ratliff owned entry. Uh, Jeff Gollett not in the pit area here this evening. Jeff, I uh, hope you're feeling better. He's at home watching on Flow Racing, but uh, that's Dalton Wilson out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Behind him out of New Waverly, Texas in the best performance motorsports number one. That is Turbo Tyler Erb, and he'll be followed out, Ben, by the winner of this race one year ago. That's right. Mike Marler out of Winfield, Tennessee in the 157 won this event a year ago and the driver that was fast time a year ago tonight in car number six out of Elk Grove, California, Kyle Larson in car six. A few other drivers making their way out on the speedway. I believe that is just the plain yep. 76 of Brandon. Still a Overton. fast one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Still a very fast entry. That's Brandon Overton in the Wells Motorsports Longhorn. 15 wins a year ago for the two-time World 100 champion. And behind him, out of Morristown, Tennessee, from just up the road in the Vic Hill-powered Longhorn, that's Forrest Trent in the 101. And one other driver's made his way out on the speedway. It looks like it's the dealership, Jensen Ford, in the 83. Tell you what, Jensen's been making those Masters built look awful fast this year. Couple of wins, picked that up down in the 602 division down at Volusia Speedway Park back during the Sunshine Nationals. And we talked about Kyle Larson, fast time in this event a year ago. Of course, promoter of this event in car number six, and he's brought some friends to the party. We're going to see the 76B shortly of Kyle Busch as he'll be making his way out. And, of course, from Stuart Haas Racing, the 14 of Chase Briscoe. He's in a Kyle Strickler team car here tonight. Look at that crowd, man. It's a great looking crowd. Well, that one guy's. Uh, the rest of the crowd looks looks pretty good. Kyle Larson, super excited, man, to, to come here for this event. Uh, I was actually in Austin, Texas at Flow Sports headquarters uh, about a week and a half ago. Kyle uh, Kyle stopped in uh, during the NASCAR weekend at Circuit of the Americas. I talked to him about this event. Really excited about this. He's really excited about uh, his and his brother-in-law, Brad Sweet's uh, High Limit Sprint Car Tour next here week? this year. And that's kicking off. Yep, Lakeside Speedway just outside Kansas City here next week. And I tell you what, they've got – did you see the list of high rollers, the drivers oh, that, yeah. that are going to run uh, their – planning to run the full tour. Lots and lots of really, really strong drivers, and that's just the guys that have committed. I think you're going to see a lot of other drivers pop in for those races as well. Well, we got one around down in turns three and four, and that's going to be Turbo. Tyler Erb put it in the spin cycle down there. He'll turn it around. No harm, no foul. Tyler was originally, admittedly, going to go run Tri-City Speedway this weekend with the Lucas Oil MLRA. Those shows rained out, so he's racing here tonight, and he's going to head down and race with the Hunt the Front series the next few nights in Florida. Yeah, and of course, big news about a month ago or so, uh, Randall Edwards, yeah. he got Best Performance Motorsports team. He's going to go turn wrenches the rest of this season for Garrett Smith, the Eatonton, Georgia driver, the number 10. So uh, uh, 
the uh, folks at Best Performance Motorsports said, you know what? They said, we have a lot of faith in the crew that we have. We have a lot of faith in Turbo at this point in time. We're going to let these guys go out and, and see what they can do. And so this is, I think this is Turbo's first race without Randall Edwards, if I'm not mistaken. Well, everything's rained out since we left Speed well, Week, so it's, it's been crazy. But you had yeah. to get a rowboat just to get here. It was like Venice in the streets of Memphis. It has been unbelievable. That's aggressive, but maybe. But the checkered flag is going to drop on this set of dirt draft hot laps. And it's still Hudson O'Neill fastest time tonight, the 12.636. But Mike Marler, you see him on your screen, the defending champion. He is 20th on the board right now, DJ. They're going to have some tweaking on that race car to get ready for Sunoco qualifying coming up a little bit later. Pretty cool, by the way, to see Mike Marler pop into the uh, Spring Nationals race yeah. last weekend. Uh, Buckshot, what a cool little track, Buckshot. Clanton, Speedway, Alabama, way. Yeah, man, absolutely. I think it's easiest to get there by helicopter, but I tell you what, it, it's cool. 32 He's, cars there, what a yeah, turnout. That was race. awesome. I used to say week. that about Tyler County. People would say, how do you get to Tyler County? I say, you know what, you just drive to, drive to about uh, New Martinsville, <laughs> West Virginia, and they shoot you in from, uh, from a cannon. Uh, the next set of cars coming out, you see on your screen, two-time winner this year out of Fort Payne, Alabama, Sam Seawright, Oliver Racing Engine Rocket XR1, and out of Kingston, Georgia, behind him, it's Tyler Millwood in car 31. How about that run Tyler Millwood put on opening night at East Bay earlier this year up on the high side of the racetrack, man? That was something that was else. Exciting. From, uh, from Knoxville, Tennessee, or as he calls it, Raccoon Valley, of course. Tennessee. Of yes, course. that's Steve Smith in the number three behind him. That's a Longhorn chassis for the driver. That Phantom powered at number three. Other drivers on the racetrack over in turn number two behind the wheel of that Kyle Strickler backup car in the Mahinda Tractors number 14. That's going to be Mitchell Indiana's Chase Briscoe. That is a Longhorn by Wells with a Dickens power plant under the hood. Greenville, Tennessee's John Tweed in the number five right behind that 14 car on your screen. Hey, he's in the vehicle powered Longhorn Covenant sponsored entry and in the middle of the back straightaway that out of Las Vegas, Nevada, that's going to be Kyle Bush. Kyle Bush in the 76B making his way into turn number three. And of course, a turbulent race at Bristol last year for NASCAR. And it was Kyle Bush that came out on top. And you see him on your screen that Wells and Sons Motorsports 76B. Former Prelude winner is Kyle Bush behind him. It's Brent Cornett in the number 22, a former Kentucky native, now calls Greenville, Tennessee home. That is a Mike Bullock powered sort car. Shout out to you, my friend James Essex. And James, good luck to you in the return of the Northern All-Stars this weekend at Brownstown. Other drivers on the track, Devin Moran behind the wheel of the Double Down Motorsports, number 99, Jaden Frame behind the wheel of the eight. Uh, now, Ethan Dodson out of Bakersfield, California, the former IMCA modified standout behind the wheel, the long horn at number one, 74, rolling down the front straightaway. Also on the speed win the set, Chris Chandler in the 8C out of Weaverville, North Carolina. Eli Beats out of Knoxville, Tennessee in the set. Hang on, Kyle Bush, as it got a little frisky over there in two. No harm, no foul, we'll stay green. And uh, man, it's fun to watch the NASCAR guys coming out here. Meanwhile, behind him, John Tweed gives a door to the three car of Neely and uh, this hot lap session for dirt draft may pay 10,000 to win DJ. Well, they're they're racing like it, if nothing else. I tell you what, Vic <laughs> Hill's got this track in really good shape right now, man. You see these guys going at it here in dirt draft hot laps. Just can't wait to see what it's going to be like. We roll off the first of four eight lap heat races just a little bit later on this evening. So Hudson O'Neill still atop the leaderboard in dirt draft hot laps. Dale McDowell second, Chris Madden third, Jensen Ford fourth, and Jonathan Davenport fifth. One two point six three six is the fast time in dirt draft hot lap set by the New Deal Hudson O'Neill. And you see Kyle Larson sitting down there in his car checking out all the action here tonight. The Grove California driver won an absolute barn burner that we were part of the broadcast down at Golden Isle Speedway in Brunswick, Georgia. Feels like a lifetime ago during Speed Weeks. He and Overton and Ricky Thornton Jr. had a heck of a show. And Kyle Larson, of course, fresh off that win, too, in NASCAR Cup Series action at Richmond Raceway. Look at that shot. Beautiful scenery here at Volunteer Speedway. As and I said, it, we lost it. it. We, yeah. we, we actually job. we nixed the drone just like that. You either nixed the drone or you, <laughs> you unplugged our uh, you unplugged the monitor I up here in front of did, us. I don't know. There we go. The winner's performance well, drone, it's teasing us well, now. Yeah, yes it is. All right. Well, well you know. Sometimes it goes that way. All right. Well, it looks like, let's see what we've got gonna, coming up next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let these drivers crisscross the racetrack here and here in just a matter of minutes they will get the drivers lined up for qualifying here this evening for your sportsman there'll be four cars at a time two laps each and then we'll come back with qualifying for the super late models there'll be three cars at a time two laps each
So sportsman qualifying will be up next. Sportsman qualifying going to be up next. As there's a look at Chaposky's performance parts speed shot down the back straight away. And as they get the sportsmen lined up for their qualifying here this evening, we'll use this opportunity to step aside for a quick set of commercial breaks. This is the Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge at Volunteer Speedway. Those of you that are here on the grounds, an opportunity to grab something to eat. Those of you watching at home on Flow Racing, don't go anywhere because we will be back right after this. Gear up to win with Fuzzy Racing. With over 40 years of experience in motorsports and countless victories, Fuzzy Racing provides teams with superior drivetrain sales and service. Whether you need assistance with transmissions, gears, axles, brakes, steering, drive shafts, or differentials, we have you covered. Family owned and operated, Fuzzy Racing is dedicated to our customers on track success. What are you waiting for? Visit us at fuzzyracing.com to learn more. Located in Parkersburg, West Virginia, Dave Posky's Performance Parts is the premier parts store in the Ohio River Valley. Housing all of the world's top name brands in motorsports, Dave Posky's Performance Parts is also home to Octane Race Products and Hoosier Tire Ohio Valley. And rest assured, we have what you need to get you on the track and into victory lane. Ordering is fast, easy, and simple and can ship directly to your doorstep. Visit Dave Posky's Performance Parts online at posky.com or give us a call at 1-800-430-RACE. Dave Posky's Performance Parts, serving the Ohio River Valley and racers across the country since 1978. The fastest growing name in the motorsport industry is the racer's brand of safety gear and apparel. Winners wear K1. All right, welcome back to Volunteer Speedway. As the combo late models will be out onto the racetrack first, they'll be have the qualifying effort. There you see the driver out of Greenville, Tennessee. That'll be the two-in of Nikki Starnes, the Rayburn chassis, log cabins for less, Green County Pest Control, Starnes per Performance Fabrication, two-in of Nikki Starnes. Other drivers out onto the racetrack will be the 10B. That'll be Bradley Llewellyn. Bradley Llewellyn out of Seymour, Tennessee. Travis Foltz powered CVR, B Clean Pressure Washing, Turf Masters, Brad Chambers, 10B of Bradley Llewellyn. And that will be the 76 of Joe Bray out of New Tazewell, Tennessee. The Randall Harris powered rocket, Bray Roofing, Bruce Built Performance, Lashes and Waxing by Page, Insane Customs, 76. So the first group will make their way into the pit area. So Bradley Llewellyn quickest out of that first group. He goes 13, 5, 7, 8, 13, 5, 7, 8. Tyler Haynes was in the 21H. The new driver out of Pennington Gap, Virginia goes 13, 7, 3, or 13, 7, 1, 3. And the two that was on the racetrack was Terry Poor, the Blue Deuce. Driver out of Seymour, Tennessee, the DJ Performance Savage Tar Chevrolet Cherokee Towing 2P. 
He was the two car that was on the racetrack. Group number two will get ready to roll out now. They'll be led by the driver out of Knoxville, Tennessee. That'll be the Crate Engine Technology Longhorn Bruce Bill Performance Shorties Motorsports Century 21 Tony Jones Pest Control 07A. That'll be Addison Cardwell. Addison Cardwell in the 07A. Behind him, out of Woodruff, South Carolina, in the XL Racing Chassis, Mary Holmes Furnishing, White Oak Mountain Wedding Venue, Holder's Body Shop, Destination Power Sports, Martin Towing, 57, it's Luke Highside Cooper. Luke Highside Cooper in the 57. Also out of the racetrack, we've seen him get a little bit of damage earlier in that hot lap session in the 01 out of Parrotsville, Tennessee, the Savage Hux Motorsports Team Husky Racing Competition Racing Equipment 01 of Wayne Raider. Wayne Raider in the 01. Bradley Llewellyn still top of the board with that 13, 5, 7, 8. Want to remind you the top 16 lock automatically in. Second fastest. It's Tyler Hayes. Third fastest will come out of group number two. It'll be Addison Cardwell. He goes 13-815, 13-815. He will be the quickest out of that second group to hit the racetrack. Group three will roll out. They'll be led by the driver out of Andersonville, Tennessee. The Phantom Race Engine Longhorn Fast Loop Rapid Wash Valvoline Longmire Excavating Triple S Farms 118 of Brody Sharp. Brody Sharp in the 118. Behind him out of Bean Station, Tennessee, the DJ Performance, Savage, 3-0 Properties, LJ Designs, Tennessee Home Place, GH Kaufman Country Store, She Shed by Day Spa, and Papa Elvin's Cozy Storage, 30 of Taylor Kaufman. Taylor Kaufman in the 30. Third car in this group will be the driver out of Mossheim, Tennessee, the TNT Chassis. That'll be the four of Chase Lawson. Chase Lawson in the four. And the fourth and final driver out on the racetrack here in this group will be the driver out of Dandridge, Tennessee, the Hendrick Powered Victory Chassis, Stennett Chevrolet, Diversified Enclosures, Alvey Construction, Camp Riverside Landing, number seven of Heath Alvey. Heath Alvey in the seven. Brody Sharp, second quick, goes 13, six, seven, two. Sharp goes second fastest. Kaufman to fourth fastest. Heath Alvey to fifth quick. So a solid group number three as the checkered flag will come out. There you get a good look at Brody Sharp. His quickest lap was a 13.587. Good enough for second overall fastest. Taylor Kaufman was good enough for fourth fastest, but it's still Bradley Llewellyn's 13.578 that holds down the top spot. Brody Sharp second. Tyler Haynes will be third. Mind starting this group in the 18. There you get a good look at the driver out of Mohawk, Tennessee. The Eagle Powered Racing Rocket XR1, Crittenden Mill Wright, and Fabrication BNB Tool. Jody and Owens Custom Meets, 18 of Gary Crittenden. Gary Crittenden in the 18. Another weekly warrior in the 33 out of Dandridge, Tennessee. The Warrior Overlook RV Park, Rev It Up Racing, Gannett Appraisal, 33 of Warren McMahon. Warren McMahon in the 33. Third car in this group out of Johnson City, Tennessee, the Hinder Power TNT, Twin D Auto Sales, TNT Towing, Moppin's Paint and Body, Shelter Insurance, Ketcherson Recovery, three of Tim Moppin. Tim Moppin in the three. Tim Moppin, fast time, 13 4 3 3. There you get a good look at Tim Moppin. Just went to the top of the board on that most recent lap. So Moppin went 13 4 3 3. That will set quick time. Another driver that was out onto the racetrack. Would be the 7J, that'll be Aaron Jones out of Mossheim, Tennessee, the Jones Race Engine Rocket King Construction, Moose Lodge 629 of Greenville, West Green Insurance, Boomco Equipment Rentals, 7J, and a good lap for him, fourth quickest for Aaron Jones. So Tim Moppin, Bradley Llewellyn, Brody Sharp, Aaron Jones, Tyler Haynes would be your top five right now. Next on to the racetrack out of Rogersville, Tennessee, the Eagle Powered Rocket, Rogersville Seamless Guttering, Dalton Direct Carpet, Jensen Ford Bodies, number four of Ryan Smith. Ryan Smith in the four. Behind him, out onto the racetrack we mentioned earlier, and I think I might have looked at that wrong. It was a typo, but in the 24-7, yeah, you have to look at it twice. It's not Ricky Weiss. It's Philip Thompson out of Whitesburg, Tennessee, the Eagle-powered sniper. Two four machines, Dryden, Martell Signs Company, Sniper Chassis, and the 24-7 of Philip Thompson. Also out onto the racetrack with the driver to White Pine, Tennessee, the Eagle Power Black Diamond, Insane Hot Rods, Black Label Coating, Lee Saucman, Trailer Rentals, Tool Man, 13. That is Dylan Morgan. Dylan Morgan in the 13. 
So the checkered flag will come out, and Philip Thompson goes fast time at a 13-3-1-7. 13-3-1-7 for Philip Thompson. He'll go top of the board. Tim Moppin now second. Bradley Lewelling third. Brody Sharp fourth, and Aaron Jones would round out your top five. Next driver out onto the racetrack with the driver out of Fairview, North Carolina, the GMT and T So Car Chemical Halo EFX 727 of Bailey Low. Bailey Low in the 727. Also in the 53, the Orange 53 at a Bulls Gap, Tennessee. It'll be the GRT chassis, Napa Auto Parts, Jerry's Auto Parts, TNC Lawn Care 53 of Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes in the 53. There you get a good look at Dakota James Smith, the second generation driver out of Powell, Tennessee, the Phantom Power Longhorn Housing Materials Surplus, Rick Welch Racing. And he's got to give a shout out to his dad, Steve Smith, in the 3D, Dakota James Smith. And the third and final driver out onto the racetrack in the 3. 3S, that'll be Shane Starnes. Shane Starnes, the driver out of Greenville, Tennessee, the Rocket, Log Cabins for Less, Alpine Building and Constructors, Green County Pest Control, Starnes Performance and Fabrication 3 of Shane Starnes. It is still Philip Thompson up top, Tim Moppin second quickest, and that is how we will fade through our time trials for our combo late models. And just got word, everybody will go to the 20 lap main event. So all drivers have now qualified themselves for the feature that will come up in just a little bit. It is time now for Sunoco time trials for the super late models. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Gap Volunteer Speedway, Bulls Gap, Tennessee, for the Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge. Sportsman qualifying has just wrapped up. Those drivers are going to transfer directly into their A main, as Cody Early told us a few moments ago. And Ben, we're now ready to get underway with Sunoco Race Fuels qualifying for the Super Late Models. Uh, three, play it again. Three car. <laughs> yeah, your eyes just lit up really big right there. Three cars <laughs> at a time. Two laps. Drivers will stand on the best of their two qualifying laps, and the field has been split in half into Group A and Group <laughs> Look B. Look at this. That's unbelievable. Uh, Look at that crowd. What a shot from the winner's performance drone as it goes high atop Volunteer Speedway as we get set for Sunoco Race Fields qualifying for the Super Late Models. 50, play it again, 45 now cars in the pit area. Yeah. Troy Eads, a late arrival, the Tazewell, Tennessee driver. And we're finally getting the last of the spectator cars parked. I think they might be parking them at Tazewell Speedway. <laughs> Your first qualifier tonight, boy, he's got a big weekend in front of him. It's Superman Jonathan Davenport, five-time winner this year out of Blairsville, Georgia, the Cornet Lightning Longhorn chassis. 
Sponsored by Nutrient Ag Solutions, Fast Chefs, Dyna Grove Seed, and Lucas Oil Products. All sponsors on that ASC warranty entry. And he is going to be running the NASCAR Truck Race and the Cup Series Race at Bristol Motor Speedway this weekend. And we're all rooting for the 49 this weekend to see what he can do on the dirt that's going to be on the pavement. Absolutely. Of course, got that truck ride, with, or got the uh, Cup ride with Colleague Motorsports there uh, a month or two ago. And then just picked up the Aspire Motorsports truck ride yep. here within the last couple of weeks. And right on cue, J.D. making his way out on the track. He's going to be joining Joined by the eight of Kyle Strickler out of Mooresville, North Carolina. The 99 of Cameron Marlowe out of Winfield, Tennessee. Kyle Strickler, the Melanie Motorsports, G-Style Transport, Cat Industries, Jerevitz, Jerevitz Industries, Clements Powered Longhorn. Four wins on the year. They've all come in the modified for that driver. And the 99 car on the speedway in this set. That'll be Cameron Marlowe out of Winfield, Tennessee. The Dean McLaughlin Motorsports, Hope Mental Health, Don Franklin Family of Dealerships, Clements Powered Longhorn for Cameron Marler. First three drivers on the clock. So those are the first three drivers on the racetrack. Dalton Wilson, your track champion, 11 7 9, 4. I don't know that we are going to get to that here today. As we wait for the timing and scoring to update for us, just as you wait for timing and scoring to update for you at home as well. Here's what we can tell you. Jonathan Davenport, the quickest of that trio with a 1, 2, 5, 7, 9. Cameron Martler, second quick with a... One, two, nine, six, four, and Kyle Strickler third quick bend with a one, three, one, three, six. So the early bar has been set by Superman Jonathan Davenport with a one, two point five, seven, nine. Coming up next will be Logan Robertson out of Waynesboro, Virginia, in the 89. The 44 of Chris Madden out of Great Court, South Carolina. And he'll be joined by Ross Bells out of Clover, South Carolina. Out of, yeah, out of Clover, South Carolina for Ross Bells. Logan Robertson, the Randy Clary Racing Engine Masters Belt, Rodneck Shaker Motorsports, Gunners Honey Entry, joined by Chris Smokey Matt, no stranger to victory lane here at the Gap. And the Rocket XR1 Durham Powered, Henderson Amusement, Franklin Enterprises, Millwood Plumbing Entry, and the 79 of Ross Bells, the double nickel race car sponsored by Billy Hicks Racing, H&H &H Auto Sales, and Lawson Trucking, all sponsors on that double nickel race car for Ross Bells. With the quick lap times that are turned here at Volunteer Speedway, for those of you watching at home, we'll give you the best of their two qualifying laps after they come across the stripe. Again, Jonathan Davenport, still the time to beat. Chris Madden goes second quick with a 1-2.856. Ross Bales fourth quick with a 1-2.979. And Logan Robertson sixth fastest, a 1-3.159. Jonathan Davenport, Ben, still the time to beat. 1-2.579. Up next, your current Lucas All-8 Motor Dirt Series points leader making his debut at Volunteer Speedway. It's Ricky Thornton Jr. out of Martinsville, Indiana on the 20 RT, the 126 of Cade Lowdy out of Rogersville, Tennessee, and the 25Z of Mason Ziegler out of Chalk Hill, Pennsylvania. Ricky Thornton Jr., the SSI Motorsports, Hoker Trucking, Dino One, Westside Tractor, Clements Powered Longhorn 20 RT, joined on Speedway by the 126 car of Cade Lowdy, the Masters Built Ryan Powered, Rogersville Seamless Guttering Incorporated, Woodhouse Chevrolet, Kaiser Manufacturing Entry for Cade Lowdy, and joining them on the Speedway will be the 25Z of Mason Ziegler out of Chalk Hill, Pennsylvania, and the Barry Wright Icon, Clements Powered, JLE Industries, Imperial River Transport, Ohio Pile Vacation Rentals 25Z. Drivers coming around for their second and final qualifying lap. Jonathan Davenport, a 12-5-7-9er. As those of you at the home, those of you at home watching, you see a 12-5-8-0. The reason for that very slight discrepancy is the timing and scoring. We actually have the the live timing and scoring directly in front of us. That actually goes out to four decimal points, and they round that four decimal point. So that's why you see a 12.580 here in Sunoco Race Fuels qualifying. Ricky Thornton Jr., his first ever appearance here, goes third quick with a 12-9-4-7. Kate Loudy goes ninth quick with a 1 3 3 2 3. And Mason Ziegler sixth quick with a 1 3 1 1 9. Next three drivers making their way out of the track. Shannon Babb in the 18. It'll be Tanner English in the 96 and Jimmy Owens in the 20. Shannon Babb, first time here since 2008 in car number 18. The Longhorn Vic Hill Power, Petrov Towing, Donnelly Trucking, Donna Grove Seed Entry. Joined by the 96 V of Tanner English making his debut. Last year's World of Outlaws rookie. Then we paint construction, base fuels. Durham, uh, actually Clements Power under the hood of that Longhorn number 96V and joining him on the speedway, Jimmy Owens in car 20. He cut his teeth at this high bank, four tenths mile over the Kohler Motorsports, Reese Monument Company, Vic Hill Power to Longhorn by Wells for Jimmy Owens. Second and final lap times going up on the board. Mason Ziegler is, or excuse me, Shannon Babb is 10th quick, 13076. His best lap, Kyle Strickler goes, is second quick. Cameron Marler third. Logan Robertson is, well, I don't think that is sorted correctly. Brad, here's what I can tell you. Jimmy Owens goes second quick with a 12.752. Then it's uh, Tanner English fourth quick. 
Ben, next group of drivers on the track. Up next, Benji Hicks out of Mount Airy, North Carolina. The double nickel race cars, BHR 55 Fabrication Clements entry. Car 55 on the racetrack with him. It'll be the seven of Ricky Weiss now hailing out of Monterey, Tennessee. The Canadian, the, the Canadian driver in the G-Style Transport, Martel Brands, Collins Brothers towing Vic Hill powered sniper race car and Michael Chilton out of Selviza, Kentucky. A Cornet powered Rocket XR1 set in stone marble, granite and quartz, Caton Industrial Painting 97. Ricky Weiss gonna go third quick with a 1-2.816. His second lap time is not as good. Checkered flag out for Salvisa, Kentucky's Michael Chilton in the 97. Chilton's best lap, 15th quick, 1-3. And check that, he goes up to 13th with a 1-3.154. And Benji Hicks, seventh fastest, Ben, with a 1-2.960. Jonathan Davenport still the time to beat, 1-2.580. All right, coming up next, we'll have Hudson O'Neill out of Martinsville, Indiana, currently second in the Lucas Oil Late Motor Dirt Series standings. Rusty Ballinger, the crate graduate out of Seymour, Tennessee, in the 1G and the B00 of Josh Henry out of Newport, Tennessee. In the number one car, that'll be Hudson O'Neill, the Valvoline VR1 Racing Oil, Soyver Calf Ranches, O'Neill Salvage Recycling, Durham Powered, Rocket XR1, four time winner this year, the 1G of Rusty Ballinger. That's the Warrior House car, Mullins LS Power under the hood, the Titan Trailer Repair, XS Power Batteries entry, and the B00 car of Josh Henry out of Newport, Tennessee, the Savage Chassis with a pro built racing engine sponsored by Henry Trucking. Hudson O'Neill was the quickest driver in at Dirt Draft Hot Lap Spin, but right now he is 16th on the grid here in Sunoco. Race fuels qualifying. Rusty Bollinger 17th quick with a 1-2.928. And the boo, the B00 of Josh <laughs> Henry, boo to you. He is 12th quick with a 1-2.985. Still Jonathan Davenport, the time to beat Ben 12, 580. I saw boo to you in the pit area. Scott Blinkless <laughs> down too, there yes. tonight. <laughs> the 23 of Corey Hedgecock out of Loudon, Tennessee, the Eagle Racing Engine, SFB Performance Systems, Noble Knight Construction, BMF race car for Corey. Hedgecock, three-time winner this year, joined by the 2S. That'll be Stormy Scott out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. The Longhorn Clements, Power Rancho Malaga Racing, Messiah Valley Transportation, Eagle Moon Farms, 2S. And on the speedway with them, the 21K of Dakota Knuckles, the Ewing, Virginia driver. Barry Roos, Tim Fletcher, Heating and Cooling, Big Kill Power, Again, Jonathan Davenport, Hudson O'Neill jumped up to second quick with a 1-2.669 Ben on his second lap then Jimmy Owens third second and final qualifying times going up on the board for this trio of drivers and there's the 2S of Stormy Scott Ben he is going to check in just outside the top 20 in the Jason Durham Wrench 2S the 23 of Corey Hedgecock 15th quick with a 1-3.084 and Dakota Knuckles in the 21K 13th with a 1-3039 Final two qualifiers in Group A. It's going to be Dell McDowell in the 17M, the Dirt Lake Model Hall of Famer. And we got Michael Brown out there, but Michael Brown's going to be the first qualifier in Group B. We're looking for Troy Eads, the Tazewell, Tennessee driver, not seeing him out there. Yeah, they were they were supposed to send two cars out, which they did. They just sent the wrong two That's out, right. as you mentioned, looking for Troy Eads in the 52. Well, Dell McDowell out of Chickamauga, Georgia, out there, the Team Zero race car. Clements Power under the hood, the Easy Go, Clot Synthetics, Cometic Gasket, SNH Systems, Kinetic Connected, Strategy Advisors, and Northeastern Fabrication, all sponsors on the 17M for Dell McDowell. And again, he's got a lot of laps around this place and he's been to victory lane more than once. First lap on the board and Dell McDowell. How about that DJ, fourth fastest. One, two, seven, seven, four, good lap for Mac Daddy. Dale McDowell fresh off a trip to the Masters. That's right. He's gonna come around, complete his second qualifying lap. Dale McDowell's second lap, one, two, six, seven, three, a little better. Third quick for Mac Daddy, Dale McDowell. And that'll wrap up Sunoco Race Fuels qualifying for Group A, the first half of the field. Jonathan Davenport quickest with a one, two, five, eight, oh. Hudson O'Neill second quick with a one, two, six, six, nine. Dale McDowell third quick with a one, two, six, seven, three. And Jimmy Owens fourth fastest with a one, two, seven, five, two. So Davenport, unofficially, it'll be Jonathan Davenport and Dale McDowell on the pole of heats one and two. Hudson O'Neill and Jimmy Owens will be on the outside of those respective heat races. So what we'll do now is we will wipe the slate clean and we will bring out the second half of the field, Group B for qualifying. The process is the same for them. There'll be three cars on the track at a time. They'll get two qualifying laps and they will take the best of those two qualifying laps 
in Group B. As you see there, that winner's performance drone shot as the field does the crossover. They make their way from the infield back across the racetrack. And again, there is a great look at the fans, both in the front and back straightaways. And an absolutely packed house here in Bulls Gap, Tennessee at Volunteer Speedway for the second running of the Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge. And Ben, I tell you what, I wasn't real sure we was going to be able to top last year's crowd. I think somehow we have managed to beat the crowd that we had here last year. It's unreal, man. Well, somehow, someway, look at that aerial shot from the winner's performance drone. And, uh, man, what a crowd. Thank you for coming out tonight, spending your hard-earned money with us as we get set for Sunoco Race Fuels Group B qualifying. And then after that, DJ, we're going to have opening ceremonies, and we're going to get ready for four big super late model heats to come your way the time to beat so far jonathan davenport 12.580 12.580 for jonathan davenport and that's gonna be a hard lap to beat uh, especially with him going out early like he did but again there's some real heavy hitters coming up here in group b as well kyle larson's gonna be the third car to come out on the racetrack tyler herb dalton wilson the current track record holder mike marler the defending winner of this event brandon overton devin moran uh, among the other drivers that are going to come out here in qualifying for for group B. Hey, there's a great view of the racetrack by some of the side by sides sitting <laughs> And look at the just, background. Nothing oh, says yeah. Smoky Mountains, the foothills of the Smokies, like some yeah. sm a smoky backdrop. That looks like a, uh, a commercial for True Timber or something is oh, what that I looks like. like. And I wore some of my True Timber oh, camo out in the woods there a month or two ago doing a little shed hunting. Love that stuff they got us. Well, we are getting set now. Group B, Sunoco qualifying for the Super Late Models here tonight, the Kyle Larson presents Flow Racing Late Model Challenge. Your first qualifier will be Lancaster, South Carolina's Michael Brown, the Clemens Powered Rocket XR1, Black Crest Farms, Crescent Moon Forestry Services, Piggly Wiggly. I love that. Clements powered Rocket XR1 for Michael Brown. He'll be joined by Ryan King in car number 30. The Brian King Roofing, Charlie Brown Company, Screen Print and Embroidery, Vic Hill Powered Warrior, number 30 for Ryan King. And your third car coming out in this set, he was your Sunoco Fast Qualifier a year ago. You see him on the screen. Young Money Kyle Larson out of Elk Grove, California. He'll be in the Rumley Motorsports, HendrickCars.com, Flow Racing, Bill Stein, d &E Marine, Mega Plumbing of the Carolinas, Cornet Powered Longhorn for Kyle Larson. And just like that, DJ, we're underway. Sunoco Race Fuels Group B qualifying. Once again, the overall quick time, Jonathan Davenport with a 12.580. That will not matter for Sunoco Race Fuels qualifying in Group B as again, we have wiped the slate clean and this will set a brand new group of qualifiers and this will set the stages for heat races three and four. You mentioned Jonathan Davenport and Dale McDowell, the two where the uh, Two of the quickest qualifiers in Group A, I believe it was Davenport, O'Neill, and then McDowell, your top three. As checkered flow, Ryan King goes around over in turns three and four. Michael Brown quickest with a 12.906. Kyle Larson second quick. I believe he's got another lap coming to him as his second lap was impeded by the spinning 30 of Ryan King. Ryan King will stand on a 13.536. Larson comes around to the white flag. He will get his second qualifying lap. Again, trying to better his first lap, which was a 12.975. Larson comes off corner number four. And his second qualifying lap is a little better, 12.820. That'll be the quickest in Group B after a trio of qualifiers. Kyle Larson, 12.820. Coming up next, it'll be Johnson City, Tennessee's Jensen Ford in the 83, the 1T of New Waverly, Texas driver Tyler Erb, and the 18D of Dalton Wilson out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Jensen Ford and the McCarter Brothers Racing, Jim Beeman Lumber, Parkway Liquor Store, McCarter Farms, Clements Powered, Masters Built. Two-time winner this year is Jensen Ford, the 1T of Tyler Erb out of New Waverly, Texas, the Clements Powered Rocket XR1, First Class Septic, Anthony's Pizza, Sandy Weld Incorporated, Number one T for Tyler Herb, a one-time winner this year in the 18D, your track record holder here at Volunteer Speedway. Dalton Wilson out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. The Ratliff Racing, Grant Lee Farms, MGL Auto Sales, Keltner Construction. Clements Powered Longhorn for Dalton Wilson. Checkered flag going up for these drivers. Jensen Ford will be second quick with a 12.876. Second lap time for Tyler Herb, fifth quick, 13.217. And the second and final time around for track record holder Dalton Wilson. He is fourth fastest with a 13.106. Kyle Larson, after six qualifiers, Ben, still the time to beat in Sunoco Race Fuels qualifying in Group B with a 12.820. Up next, it's Forrest Trent out of Morristown, Tennessee in the 101. The 157, you're defending. 
defending event champion, Mike Marler out of Winfield, Tennessee, in the J27 of Jaden Frame out of Deckard, Tennessee. Forrest Trent, he's in the Vicuil Powered Longhorn Service 101 Storm Recovery. Trent Logging, TNC Transportation, and on the stop apparel 101. Joined on the speedway by the 157 of Mike Marler, with that said, a defending event champion. One win on the year for the driver of the Delk Equipment Sales, Petrov Towing, Bill Stein, Mesquite Valley Transportation, Cornet Powered Longhorn, and Jaden Frame, car 27, the driver out of Deckard, Tennessee. And he is behind the wheel of the J&J Merchandise, NBJ J&J Construction, Poultry Electric, and Pro Hardware Capital Race Car. Checkered flag going out on this trio of qualifiers, Ben. They're all trying to get to Kyle Larson's lap of 12.820. And the quickest driver of this trio is going to be downtown Michael Brown out of Lancaster, South Carolina with a 12.906. Mike, he's third quick. Mike Marler is fourth quick with a 13.029. And... Jaden Frame in the J27 seventh fastest with a 13200 after nine qualifiers. Larson, Jensen, Ford, Michael Brown, your top three. Next set of cars coming to the Speedway, and it'll be the three car of Austin Neely out of New Tazewell, Tennessee, joined by Devin Moran out of Dresden, Ohio, and the 76 of Brandon Overton out of Evans, Georgia. Austin Neely, the Reese Monument Company, Giles Motorsports, First Century Bank, Vic Hill Powered Longhorn Car 3, joined by the 76 of Brandon Overton, the Wells and Sons Motorsports, Garto Southern, Muscle Factory, RW Powell Construction, Clements Powered Longhorn, five-time winner this year is that driver, and Devin Moran, the Roger Sellers Motorsports, number 99, the driver out of Dresden, in Ohio on the Lazy Day RVs, Big River Still, Bill Stein, McHugh, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. And number 99 for Devin Moran, Cornet power under the hood of that race car as laps go up on the board. Checkered flag out for your final two qualifiers in this group. And Brandon Overton, the quickest of this trio. He's fifth quick in Group B with a 1-3.078. The 99 of Devin Moran, 11th quick out of 12 with a 1-3.350. And the three of Austin Neely is 10th fastest with a 13.294. Kyle Larson, Jensen Ford, Michael Brown, your top three after 12. Up next out of Greenville, Tennessee, it's Brent Cornett in the 22, the 31 of Tyler Millwood out of Kingston, Georgia, and Kyle Bush out of Las Vegas, Nevada in the 76B. Brent Cornett in the Rogersville Dental Center, LB Enterprise, Bullock powered Swartz race car number 22, the 31 of Tyler Millwood, the Millwood Plumbing Competition Racing Equipment, Durham powered Rocket XR1, the 2017 Ultimate Late Model Series champion, and Kyle Bush, He'll be in car 76B out of Las Vegas, Nevada. The Wells and Sons Motorsports, Garanto Southern Muscle Factory, RW Powell Construction, car 76B for Kyle Busch. Checkered flag coming out, second and final time, going up for the 22 of Brent Cornett. He is going to be 14th quick with a 14602. Tyler Millwood crosses the line 13th fastest with a 13.386. And the quickest driver of that trio, Kyle Busch in the Wells and Sons Motorsports 76B. He is 11th quick out of 15 drivers in Sunoco Race Fuels qualifying in Group B. Kyle Busch's lap 13347. After 15 cars, Kyle Larson, the time to beat in Group B, 12820. Up next is Sam C. right out of Fort Payne, Alabama. In the 16, the 5 of John Tweed out of Greenville, Tennessee. And the 109 of Eli Beats out of Knoxville, Tennessee. C. right and Oliver Racing Engine, Rocket XR1, Agcor still, JR Excavating Farm Systems number 16. At two-time winner this year. John Tweed in the five, the Covenant Tweed Family Foundation Titan Display and Packaging Entry car number five and the 109 of Eli Beats, four-time winner last year out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Motorsports, TMC Transportation, CNC Specialized Trucking, Clements Powered Capital Race Car for Eli Beats. Kyle Larson, the driver they're all trying to get to in Sunoco Race Fuels qualifying in Group B. Checker flag going up for the five of John Tweed. He's 18th quick out of 18 with a 1-4-1-0-6. Eli beats in the 109. Checks in 11th quick with a 1-3.274. And the 16 of Sam Seawright goes eighth fastest, Ben, with a 1-3-178. After 18 cars in Group B, it's Larson, Ford, Brown, your top three. Up next out of Mitchell, Indiana, it's Chase Briscoe in car number 14. And the eight of Chris Chandler out of Weaverville, North Carolina. Chase Briscoe in the Longhorn by Wells. Jay Dickens power, Mahindra Tractors, Cat Industries. Actually, Clements power under the hood of that race car. Number 14 for Chase Briscoe, the 2021 NASCAR Rookie of the Year. And he's got trouble out of two down the back straight, limping that car down. And that is going to draw the spring rhythm caution flag as trouble on that race car. So also in this set, we'll have the number eight C car of Chris Chandler 
And Chandler out of Weaverville, North Carolina, the Chandler Motorsports Hardest and Suspension Technology Dargy Powered TNT Race Car, Car 8C. And you see right there, Chase Briscoe having trouble for the driver of the number 14. Yeah, tough break for Chase Briscoe in that Kyle Strickler backup car, the 14 again right now. Kyle Larson has the time to beat here in Sunoco Racefields qualifying in Group B with a 12.820. Jonathan Davenport in Group A, still the overall quick qualifier in Sunoco Racefields qualifying with a 12.580. As Briscoe is going to nurse the Strickler backup car into the infield, and that means it'll be the aid of Chris Chandler out there for a single car qualifying lap. All right, so we'll see what Chandler can do after this. Two more cars, and that will right, wrap up Sunoco Racefields qualifying here tonight. Night at Volunteer Speedway. We'll get ready for opening ceremonies and heat race action as Chris Chandler comes around for his first lap. Chris Chandler, good lap, Ben. 12th quick, 1-3.280. Well, I like that car. It's a good-looking number eight, that TNT yes. race car. The Chandler Motorsports HST entry comes off corner number four, lap number two for Chris Chandler. Not as good. 13.419. He will be 12th quick. So that means just two drivers left to qualify here tonight in Sunoco Race Fuels time trials. And it's going to be Ethan Dotson, the modified standout out of Bakersfield, California, moving into the late model ranks. He'll be in the 174, and he'll be joined by Steve Smith out of Powell, Tennessee, in car number three. Ethan Dotson, six wins on the year. They've all come in the mod division. The Chris Bragg Racing finish line outdoors. Cliffs Goodyear Auto Service. Bill Stein, car 170. The 2019 IMCA Super Nationals Modified Champion and the veteran Steve Smith on the speedway in this set in car number 3S out of Powell, Tennessee. The Rick Welch Racing Fan and Longhorn. And it looks like Troy Eads has made his way out. The Taswell, Tennessee driver in the 52. He will not get times because this is not his group. Final qualifiers, DJ. Uh-oh, and he's definitely not going to get much more. It's a big puff of smoke out of the 52. Troy Eads trip around trip around Volunteer Speedway is not only a bit late on the racetrack, but it's also a bit short as well as a big puff of smoke comes out from underneath the 52, and it looks like his night has come to a premature end. Ethan Dotson 16th quick on his first qualifying lap, the former IMCA modified standout originally from Bakersfield, California in the 174 to 13.370. Again, that is 16th quick. Steve Smith, the veteran driver, calls Powell, Tennessee, or as he told me, Raccoon Valley, Tennessee home. It is, he is 20th quick with a 13907 with 22 drivers attempting a lap here in Snoko Race Fuels qualifying in Group B. So track staff out on the speedway. As you see uh, in the drone shot from that winner's performance drone there on the top part of your screen. They're checking over the racetrack to make sure no fluids have been dropped down. And once they make sure the track is clean and clear, you see them there making that hard left-hand turn down to the infield. It will be one final qualifying lap for the one with the small 7-4 in it. That's Ethan Dotson, the Longhorn race car. And the three, the veteran Steve Smith, Raccoon Valley, Tennessee. In the three, talk to Steve Smith back in the pit area. Oh boy, we had a good time reminiscing. Steve and I did talking about some of our some of our good friends that uh, that have passed over the uh, over the last year or so. Guys like Rick Eshelman and uh, C.J. Rayburn and a few others as well. Just one of the one of the good guys in the sport. A great personality, and great person to talk to as well. Steve Smith, as the checkered flag comes out for the 174 of Ethan Dodson, his second qualifying lap is not as good, so he'll stand on a 13370 and be 16th quick. Steve Smith's second lap was his best lap. He does not move up any positions, though, a 13814, so Steve Smith will be 20th, and that'll wrap up Sunoco Race Fuels qualifying in Group B. Ben Kyle Larson, the quickest driver in the second half of the field with a 12.820. Unofficially, he will start on the pole of heat race number three, and on the pole of heat race number four, your second quick qualifier in Group B, it'll be the dealership, Jim. Ford with a 12877. Michael Brown, third quick, and Mike Marler, fourth quick. Those drivers are also going to be on the front row of their respective heat races as well as we are just about to do the crossover and have the drivers in the infield make their way back into the pit area. So as these drivers cross over, and make their way back into the pit area. We're going to get our heat races lined up. Don't go anywhere. Next up will be opening ceremonies here at Volunteer Speedway. This is the Kyle Larson Presents Flow Racing Late Model Challenge. 
Looking for a competitive edge at the track? Trust Sweet Manufacturing for top-of-the-line steering components. Since 1978, we are proud to be employee-owned and carrying on the tradition of quality racing parts. Our state-of-the-art CNC machines allow us to craft the best possible parts for your race car. Don't settle for second best. Let us turn your wheels and choose Sweet Manufacturing for all your racing needs. Find your competitive edge at sweetmanufacturing.com when my grandfather started winter's performance in 1958 he had one goal building the best strongest speed parts possible for his fellow racers today nearly 65 years later our family still delivering on that goal day after day race after race we're in this for the racers we're in it for the competition we're in it for the win Introducing the latest technology in the racing industry, Spring Rhythm. Spring Rhythm is an app that can replace a spring smasher, giving you access to the same information the fast guys are using to stay ahead. The app tells you where to set your coilover nuts to hit your install loads and tells you the dynamic loads that the car will see in travel. It also simplifies adjustments at the track, giving you the information needed to adjust loads without taking the shock off the car. Spring Rhythm has been rigorously tested to ensure accuracy. There's no excuse to not be using Spring Rhythm. The fastest growing name in the motorsport industry is the racer's brand of safety gear and apparel. Winners wear K1. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Kyle Larson Presents Flow Racing Late Model Challenge here at Volunteer Speedway. We're super happy to have those of you here on the grounds as well as those of you watching at home live on Flow Racing. We've wrapped up all the preliminary action here this evening. It's now time to get underway with our pre-race ceremonies and our national anthem. So at this time, we'll ask all of you to please rise and remove your caps, delivering this evening's invocation from Dirt Racing Outreach, Mr. Jason Morgan. Would you bow your heads with us while we go to the Lord in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. Well, we're excited and thrilled in our hearts because you're alive. We thank you, Lord, for being our risen Savior and soon coming King. It's Easter weekend, and Lord, we are so thankful for who you are and what you've done for us. Lord, we're excited to be here with Flow Racing and Vic Hill and his folks tonight, all of our friends, family. Lord, I just pray and thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your love. And pray, Lord, that you just keep everyone safe tonight, the drivers, crew workers, track officials, everyone that's going home, driving home later on. Lord, just we thank you for letting the rain stay away and have this event tonight. Again, we just can't praise you and thank you enough for everything you've done, for letting us live in a free country. Lord, bless our military, first responders, all it's our duty to pray for, those that are sick and hurting tonight. Lord, we're just excited about everything you've done for us and how good you are. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Jason. Thank you very much at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to please remain standing if you are able and remove your hats for the playing of the Star Spangled Banner. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous sky on the ramparts we watched were so gallant.
All right, Volunteer Speedway, that means there's just one more question to ask. Are you ready for the Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge here this evening? The first Integra Shocks Heat Race making its way on the track. Eight laps will be the distance. Top four drivers will transfer to tonight's main event. Uh, and it, it is a loaded up one. As you see them making their way out to the speedway, Jonathan Davenport on the pole. He's got Del McDowell starting alongside in car number 17. And back in row number two, you got Ricky Thornton Jr. into his outside, Tanner English in the 96. Ricky Weiss inside of row three. As getting them lined up back in the pack, making their way out onto the speedway. So we get set to go here tonight. And I tell you what, DJ, what a crowd, what a fill the cars that we have here in action tonight. Absolutely, Ben. Here is the starting lineup for heat race number one. It's going to be Jonathan Davenport and Dale McDowell in row one, Ricky Weiss and Tanner English in row two. Row three, Ricky Thornton Jr. and Cameron Marler. Row four will be Josh Henry and Shannon Babb. Row five will be Mason Ziegler and Michael Chilton, Kate Loudy and Troy Eads, if he's able to make it, rounding out the field. I don't see Kate Loudy or Troy Eads out there. No surprise on Troy Eads. I believe Kate Loudy trying to make his way, snake his way down through uh, the staging lane. It's a mass of humanity down there. There's a lot, you got a lot of race cars, you got a lot of people. And what a cool shot there from the winner's performance drone here tonight. The second annual Kyle Larson presents Flow Racing Elite Model Challenge. And how about this front row when you got Davenport and you got McDowell up there? Man, talk about the wins, the championships, the crown jewels on the front row of this You've one. You've got arguably two of the best drivers in the country, number one. But number two, Jonathan Davenport. I mean, how good has he been in dirt late model racing the last several years? And to be very honest with you, even though he's from Chickamauga, Georgia, I think back to the to the days of the early spring fall and, and back yeah. in the days of the scorcher and things like that, how good has Dale McDowell been in Eastern Tennessee throughout his career, man? Certainly no surprise to see him starting up front. And I'll tell you what, a guy who shopped uh, used to be uh, just right back here. Ricky Weiss. Ricky yep. Weiss, yeah, on the inside of row number two. And Tanner English, someone who told me back in the pit area, he came here as a kid with his dad, but this is the first time he's been here behind the wheel of a dirt late model. He's starting outside that second row. Well, Integra Shocks and Springs heat race number one, eight laps the distance, top four move off to the main event. Everybody else will be in one of two B mains coming up a later this evening. And now Kate Lowdy needing a push in the 126 and things going from bad to worse, perhaps for the Rogersville, Tennessee driver and that JB Salvage B Men lumber 126 just cannot seem to get a break trying to get that car up to speed. And he'll be, he's got his work cut out for him, DJ, because he's starting at the back of this one. You want to feel old, Ben? I mean, you and I feel old already. Kate Lowdy's 18 years old now. By Don't want to talk about it. I remember it. when Don't Kate Lowdy was, was just a kid running around in the pits with his dad. Kirk Lowdy, and now he's out here behind the wheel of a dirt late mile. I'll tell you what, doing a pretty good job. He's uh, He's been here and tested before, and I uh, actually saw some of the lap times. He's turned the lap times down here and testing that are uh, right there in the neighborhood. Actually, he was a little bit quicker than Jimmy Owens. He was just off of uh, Brandon Shepard and some uh, testing down here a few weeks back, so that young man's got a really, really bright future ahead of him, and it's really good to see youngsters like him coming up here in the sport. Well, the unfortunate part, that 126 does not want to fire, so we're going to see if we're going to push it to the infield, going to try to get him down the front straightaway. If not, we're going to probably have to push him down into the infield. So, again, eight laps the distance, top four move on. We'll have four heat races, two B mains. And with no B main tonight in the Sportsman, and we've moved the Sportsman feature to last because we know there could be weather in the area later, we're going to have four late model heats. We're going to have two B mains, and then we're going to have the feature, and we'll wrap it up with the Sportsman main event. Going to be a bang-bang program here this evening, if at all possible, as your flagman, Wesley Wovak, going to give him the high sign, telling him they're going to go green flag racing next time by. Again, Jonathan Davenport on the pole, Dale McDowell on the outside. It's Ricky Weiss and Tanner English in row two, Ricky Thornton Jr. and Cameron Marlin in row three. Eight laps the distance. Top four transfer to the feature. They will fire coming off turn number four. Integra Shocks and Springs heat number one is underway. Green's up, and they're off into one and two, and it's Davenport to the lead. A big weekend for that driver. He'd love to start with 20,000 tonight. It all starts in Integra Shocks and Springs heat race one. Your leader, Dale McDowell in second. Second, third is Weiss, 
And now Ricky Thornton Jr. goes to work on Tanner English for fourth. Ricky Thornton Jr., his first appearance here at the Volunteer Speedway. As well, look at Cameron Marler trying to get a run on the outside. Man, I'll tell you what, when the top side is there, it is so fun to watch these guys rip around the high side of the racetrack. Everyone goes back down to the bottom and turns three and four. Tanner English gets a run in the battle for the last transfer spot. And how about that battle? Right there, he will take it. No, Marler takes it back away from him, and that's the best battle on the speedway you see right now as now Marler up into that fourth and final transfer spot English back to fifth. I tell you what it's uh, it's fun to watch these guys around the track right now Ben the high side definitely the place to be down in turns one and two the low side the place to be down in turns three and four as we double up for you at home on the left hand side of your screen at the halfway point that's your race leader Jonathan Davenport on the right hand side of your screen the best battle on the track and that battle right now is for position number six between Josh Henry and the double zero and the 20 yard tee of Rick Ricky Thornton Jr. Just a handful of laps remaining. Five down, three to go. Davenport out front. He's got a half second lead over Dale McDowell. McDowell with that same distance back to the seven of Ricky Weiss. Ben this time by two laps to go. There's two laps to go, and they all down in two, and they like the bottom down in three. And just as I, now Davenport starts around and try some different lines. White flag for one more time. Final time around for the $2 million man one year ago, Superman Jonathan Davenport, as he takes the Lance Landers 49 around turns three and four for the final time. Checkered flag is out. Davenport going to get the win in Tegra Shocks and Springs heat race number one. Adele McDowell comes home in position two, three. We'll go to Ricky Weiss, your fourth and final transfer, Cameron Marler. That means Tanner English. Barry and uh, Josh Henry, Ricky Thornton Jr., Shannon Babb, Ziegler, Chilton, and Loudy will all head off to a B main. Your fourth and final transfer out of Winfield, Tennessee, Cameron Marler in the 99, coming home in third, Ricky Weiss out of Headingley, Manitoba in the seventh, second to Dell McDowell out of Chickamauga, Georgia. And your winner of Integra Shocks and Springs Heat Race 1 out of Blairsville, Georgia, Jonathan Davenport in the Cornet Powered Longhorn Race Car, sponsored by Nutrient Ag Solutions, Fast Chefs, Dynagrew, Lucas Oil Products, and ASC Warranties, all sponsors on that entry. We're going to step away for just just a second, and we come back. We are going to have heat race number two presented by K1 Race Gear. Welcome back to the Kyle Larson Presents Flow Racing Late Model Challenge here at Volunteer Speedway. Integra Shocks and Springs Heat Race number one in the books. Next up will be K1 Race Gear Heat Race number two as it's in the staging lane. There's Jonathan Davenport, the winner of Integra Shocks and Springs Heat Race number one. Ben, he's going to make his way back into the pit area. He's going to start on the pole of tonight's 50-lap $20,000 to win main event. And we have got K1 Race Gear Heat Race number two just about to make its way on the track. And starting on the pole, it's going to be Hudson O'Neill in the Rocket XR, the Rocket XR1, Rocket 1 Racing House Car number one into his outside and the Longhorn by Wells number 20 it's Jimmy Owens the Kohler Motorsports entry we'll move back to row number two and on the inside we find the driver out of Great Court South Carolina and the Franklin Enterprises number 44 that's going to be Chris Smokey Madden on his outside a good qualifying effort for the driver the Mike Knuckles Warrior number one G it'll be Rusty Bollinger row number three Mount Airy North Carolina's Benji Hicks in the 55 and his outside Clover South Carolina's Ross Bells in car 79 we move back to row number four and on the inside we find the driver the 21k that's going to be Dakota to Knuckles and on his outside starting eight. Keep your eyes on this driver out of Loudon, Tennessee. Already a couple wins this year for the 23. That's Corey Hedgecock. And your final starters here tonight in heat race number two presented by K1 Race Gear. It's Kyle Strickler and car 8S into his outside the 89 of Logan Robertson. And on the back row to be Stormy Scott out of Las Cruces, New Mexico in the 2S. 11 cars, eight laps, top four move off to the main event. Second of four heat races. And again, this one is brought to you by K1 Race Gear and 
DJ, a, a guy <laughs> on the pole that loves this place in Hudson O'Neill, and a guy on the outside that really loves this place, Jimmy Owens, as he cut his teeth at this high bank four-tenths mile oval. Absolutely, and take nothing away from the drivers in the middle of this field for sure, but you look back at your last three or four starters, Corey Hedgecock, Kyle Strickler, Logan Robertson, and Stormy Scott, and uh, pretty easy to see, man, that this is an absolutely talented field front to back. Again, eight laps in distance, top four, top four transfer to the A main. This is K1 race gear heat race number two looking for the green flag out of turn number four and we are up and it's going to be Hudson O'Neill trying to beat Jimmy Owens off into one and two and Huddy will slide up the banking he's the leader out of two here comes Owens and here comes Madden Jimmy Owens going to try to sneak down to the inside though Hudson O'Neill going to take that slider line away coming off turn number four O'Neill's car drifts up the racetrack just a little bit leaves the door open for Jimmy Owens Owens will now try to take advantage and drive down to the inside of turns one and two can't get done Ross Bales working his way up through the field then he's gone from six he's working the middle no. now in turns three and four. And he shoves up the racetrack a little bit, and the guy that builds the race car, and Benji Hicks trying to really mend. Meanwhile, you got a battle for second. Matten down low, Owens up top. Owens will hold on to second. Hudson O'Neill driving away early in this one. Benji Hicks right now on the outside looking at you. You see him right there flashing into your screen in the white 55. In front of him, your fourth place car. This is the last transfer. Ross Bales in the battle for second now on your screen. Jimmy Owens in the Autism Awareness, number 20, the 44. Chris Madden as we come to the halfway point. And Hudson O'Neill right now, comfortable advantage out in front in this one. Owens trying to get there as he stretched it over Madden for third. Bells holds on to fourth. Benji Hicks rides back in fifth, back in the sixth spot. It's Ballinger, Dakota Knuckles, Strickler back there behind them. Hedgecock not having the night he wants, and behind him, it's Stormy Scott and Logan Robertson. Laps ticking away here in K1 Race Gear Heat 2. It's just wild, man, to watch these guys run. Again, the very high side of the racetrack down in turns one and two. Two laps to go this time. Again, as you mentioned earlier, the very high side down in turns one and two. And right now, everyone going right down to the bottom in turns three and four. As the night wears on and this track widens out, you're going to see more guys running on the bottom in one and two, and then guys going up high in three and four. That's an O'Neill final time off into one and two with the white flag high in the air and DJ the rocket XR1 house car off into three and four it's like he's going to be your winner in this one checkered flag is out indeed it is out of Martinsville in the end of the new deal Hudson O'Neill takes the win in K1 race gear heat race number two second is going to go to Jimmy Owens Chris Smokey Madden finishes third the fourth and final transfer spot goes to the 79 of Ross no it, yes it goes to Ross Bales and then it's going to be Benji Hicks Finishing in the fifth spot, six, Rusty Bollinger, seventh, Kyle Strickler, Dakota Knuckles, eighth, Corey Hedgecock, ninth, Stormy Scott, tenth, and Logan Robertson, eleventh. So your fourth and final transfer out of Clover, South Carolina, Ross Bells in car 79, and third, Chris Madden out of Gaffney, South Carolina, in the 44th. Second will go to the 20 of Jimmy Owens out of Newport, Tennessee, and your winner out of Martinsville, Indiana, the Valvoline VR1 Racing Oil, Soyber Calf Ranches, O'Neill Salvage and Recycling, Ace Metal Works, Gunners Honey, five-star race car bodies, Durham-powered, Rocket XR1 for Hudson O'Neill. And he picks up the win in K1 race gear, heat race number two. And waiting in the wings, Buzzy Racing, heat race number three. Before we get to Buzzy Racing products, heat race number three as the cars again do the crossover on the racetrack. We will use this time to step aside and thank some of our marketing partners here at Flow Racing. Welcome back to the Kyle Larson Presents Flow Racing Late Model Challenge here at Volunteer Speedway. First two heat races are in the books, Ben. We've got Buzzy Racing Products, heat race number three out on the speedway. Once again, eight laps will be the distance. The top four will transfer to the A main in the lineup for Buzzy Racing Products. Heat number three looks like this. Starting on the pole out of Elk Grove, California. In car number six, it's Kyle Larson to his outside. Downtown Michael Brown out of Lancaster, South Carolina. We move back to row number 
number two and on the inside there we find the driver out of Evans George in the Wells and Sons Motorsports number 76 that's Brandon Overton and on his outside out of Morristown, Tennessee in the 101, that's going to be Forrest Trent. Row number three out of Deckard, Tennessee, the J27 of Jaden Frame into his outside from Knoxville, Tennessee in the 109, it's Eli Beats. We move back to the next row, and on the inside, we find the new Taswell, Tennessee driver, the three in, that's Austin Neely, and on his outside, out of Dresden, Ohio, in the double down motorsports number 99, it's going to be Devin Moran. And your final three starters in this one, Tyler Millwood in the 31 out of Kingston, Georgia, into his outside, Brent Cornett out of Greenville, Tennessee, and on the back row, also out of Greenville, Tennessee. It'll be John Tweed as 11 cars that they can all make it. Buzzy Racing Products, Heat Race number three. And DJ, you talk about no rest for the wicked. B main number one lineup's already been posted in the pit area because it's coming up after the fourth heat race as we keep things cranking along here tonight at the Gap. Absolutely. A Thursday night. A lot of people here on the grounds and an absolute slew of people watching at home as well. We want to try to get those folks on the grounds out of here in as efficient of a fashion as possible. And those of you watching at home, hey, we know you're not immune to this. You've got to get up and go to work the next day as well. We don't try to do you the service as well as the yellow lights have already been turned off. Buzzy Racing Products Heat Race number three about to get underway. Kyle Larson and Michael Brown in row one. Brandon Overton and Forrest Trent in row two. Green flags up. We are underway. Buzzy Racing Products Heat Race number three. Top four to the feature winner. This one starts outside front row and Larson slides up in front of Brown as we got one down the front straightaway and that's going to be Austin Neely in the front stretch wall. That is going to draw the spring rhythm caution flag with zero laps complete, and oh man, you hate to see that for Neely, the new Tazewell Tennessee drivers. He's gonna try to back away and it says welcome to the gap, but nobody wants to hang out right there. Yeah, no kidding is he's got heavy damage on the front end of that race car and uh, he already had a new uh, left side or new driver's side door on that, actually door and quarter panel both on that race monument company number three, and he may need a new nose and filler panel on that race car. Yeah, the filler panel beat out. Definitely going to need a, a, a new front bumper on that entry. DJ, I didn't see what happened, did you? No. I was watching the battle for the lead off into one and two. Yeah, and I was... I, I, I was pleasantly surprised because Kyle Larson was actually able to grab the lead on that initial start on the bottom of the racetrack and right on cue. Here's a look at your five-star race car bodies. Instant replay. We'll see what happened. Ooh, to the three of Austin Neely as Tyler Millwood went down to the inside. Tried to work his way by Neely. He did so, and Neely found himself welcoming he found himself welcoming himself well, to now you see that the left front of that nose yeah. up under the left front tire and the wreckers making its way out so we've got the spring rhythm caution flag on the speedway here tonight at volunteer speedway and they're going to get that car on the hook. And I tell you what, Michael Brown had a heck of a start. Uh, Kyle Larson got to the lead, but Brown was doing all he could to try to get there. Just couldn't quite make it, but he now gets a second chance of redemption. Yeah, and again, Kyle Larson got that lead initially uh, on the bottom of the racetrack. So if you're Michael Brown right now, you give the old ad, you're going to kind of get up on the steering wheel, pull those belts a little bit tighter because you know what's coming. You know who's starting beside of you. And you've seen, uh, you've seen the guy on the outside front row get a pretty decent start here on these first two heat races. We'll see if Brown's able to do that at the start of this third Buzzy Race Products heat race and uh, maybe parlay that into a heat race win. If he does win this heat race, Ben, the winner of this heat starts on the outside. Yes, front row of tonight's 50 lap $20,000 to win a main which I tell you what man what a way and we haven't had a lot of racing here lately mother nature's been winning <laughs> more races 20,000 tonight tomorrow night the hunt the front super dirt series they're going to go after 20,000 down at all tech raceway and some of these guys they've got an eight and a half hour drive from here to tonight down there and if you haven't heard the weekend with both the, the spring nationals and the Ironman series that was going to be with raceway and up at Tazewell I think I don't think what's going to be rescheduled as well. July 3rd, it's going yes. to be just not a favorable forecast in the area. So a lot of these drivers, this might be the only time they get to race this weekend. As you see, Neely, a lot of damage on that three car heading back to the pits. And truth be told, uh, you and I were in a lot of conversations over the weekend as well, just keeping an eye on the forecast for this race, trying to be very sensitive. Here's another look at your five-star race car bodies. in the replay. Oh, I thought about it. Uh, trying to, to, again, keep the race fans and, and the crews in mind as well. A lot of folks traveling a pretty big distance. Uh, we were keeping 
keeping a close eye on the weather models uh, really up in the uh, up in the days leading up to this event. Lots of phone calls, lots of conference calls, and uh, thankfully Mother Nature plays nice, and uh, knock on wood, I think we maybe made the right decision. Well, we hope so. We're going to keep <laughs> it rolling just the same. We're not going to tempt fate, so we're going to keep things going. We're going to try try number two here in Buzzy, Buzzy Racing Products Heat Race number three. Eight laps the distance, top four move on, and it's Larson and Brown on the front row as they're going to make their way around to Wesley Womack's green flag out of turn number four. Larson gets a good jump coming off turn number four. See if he's able to slide up the racetrack and get the high side. He does. Brown going to try to go a little higher, and that's going to open up the door for both Forrest Trent and the 76 of Brandon Overton. Yeah, much better start for in that time and Michael Brown's got his hands full as he's got Overton working on him for that spot and how about Forrest Trent looking strong back and forth. The Morristown Tennessee driver currently holds that fourth and final transfer spot Michael Brown the Lancaster South Carolina native holding off Brandon Overton right now and this all happens behind your race leader Kyle Larson but I tell you what they're not letting Larson out of the crosshairs Ben Larson that last time by only six tenths of a second ahead of that battle. Well right now Larson leads the way as he works through turns one and three and four excuse me off at turn number four, and Michael Brown sits in second. Brown content to ride back there right now. Overton in the third spot. That top side of the racetrack, that cushion at the top side of one and two, Ben, just keeps getting pushed up higher and higher. It's not going to be long before those cars aren't able to run that top side of the racetrack like they are anymore as the cross flags are shown to the field. Four laps down, four laps remaining. Larson stays out front, Brown second, Overton third, and Forrest Trent runs in that fourth and final transfer spot right now. Tyler Millwood, the car right there on your screen. He is the first car outside looking in. He runs in fifth. Eli beats his sixth. Devin Moran runs in seventh this time by two laps to go for your race leader, Kyle Larson. And Larson, just like the previous heats, he likes the cushion down in one and two, three and four. Searching that moisture down low. Let's, let's go a little bit wider that time off of four. White flag in the air. Final time around the speedway for Kyle Larson. Larson has four tenths of a mile separating himself from a checkered flag here in Buzzy Racing Products. Heat race number three as he takes the Kevin and Leroy Rumley. Rest in peace, Leroy. The K&L Rumley, as we still call it, number six off quarter number four to a checkered flag. He'll get the win in Buzzy Racing Products. Heat race number three, Michael Brown second, Brandon Overton third. Now Overton and went back Overton to fourth on the last lap. Yeah. yeah, Forrest Trent gets by him, so Trent gets third, Overton fourth. Those four drivers transfer. Then it's Millwood in fifth, Eli beats sixth, Devin Moran seventh, Jaden Frame eighth, Brent Cornette ninth, John Tweet tenth, and Austin Neely doesn't finish the race. He's credited with 11th. Your fourth and final transfer out of Evans, Georgia. Brandon Overton of a 76 coming home in third. The 101 of Forest Trent out of Morristown, Tennessee. Second to Lancaster, South Carolina's Michael Brown in the 24D. And your winner, he'll start outside front row here tonight out of Elk Grove, California. Kyle Larson in card number six. The HendrickCars.com, Bill Stein, DD Marine, Mega Plumbing, Hot Rod Septic Treatment, Valvoline, Senior Life Insurance Company, Wheeler Metals, Flow Racing, Cornet, Powered Longhorn for Kyle Larson. Well, as they head down to the tech area, we are going to step down, step away, and thank some marketing partners, and we'll be right back with iBox Springs Heat Race number four. Welcome back to Volunteer Speedway here in Bulls Gap, Tennessee. We've got three heat races in the books. Ben, Ibox Springs heat race number four, the fourth and final heat race of the evening, has made its way on the back straightaway. Scheduled to have 11 cars. Chase Briscoe, after getting involved in that accident earlier on in qualifying and hitting the front stretch wall, he is unable to make his way back out of the speedway. So we'll go with 10 cars for eight laps. Top four transfer. Your lineup looks 
looks like this. On the pole out of Johnson City, Tennessee, it's Jensen Ford in the 83 and his outside defending event champion of this race, Mike Marler in the 157 from Winfield, Tennessee. We move back to row number two and on the inside, we find the driver out of Fayetteville, North Carolina in the 18D. That's going to be Dalton Wilson on his outside already. A couple wins this year for the driver of the 16. That's Sam Seawright. Row number three will be the 1T of Tyler Herb out of New Waverly, Texas into his outside, Chris Chandler out of Weaverville, North Carolina. Moving back to row number four on the inside out of Las Vegas, Nevada behind the wheel. The other Wells and Sons Motorsports, number 76. That's going to be Kyle Bush. And on his outside, originally from Bakersfield, California, in the 174, it's Ethan Dotson. And your final three starters. First one starting inside of row five. That'll be Ryan King out of Seymour, Tennessee, in the 30. To his outside, the three of Powell, Tennessee, Steve Smith. And on the back row, don't think he's going to make it. Chase Briscoe after contact with the wall and qualifying. As we get set now, uh, 10 cars, eight laps, top four move on. Winner starts fourth in tonight's main event. This is iBox Springs heat race number four. Fourth and final heat race of the night is going to find the green flag. The dealership, Jensen Ford, leads him up the corner. Mike Marler's got a good run, though. Side by oh. side off, and it turns one and two. C right gets the wall, gathers back up. Jensen Ford with the early lead down the back straightaway. Now they're side by side for second. Dalton Wilson on the inside. Mike Marler trying to get a run on the outside. And he'll do it. Mike Marler goes to the lead in the 157. Jensen Ford in second back. Back in third now, Dalton Wilson, and here comes Turbo, and he's bringing C right to the party. Good battle behind these drivers for that fourth and final transfer spot. That's Tyler Erb on the inside in the best performance motorsports number one. Sam C right on the outside in the 16. Top four make their way in the nice 50 lap A main. And Tyler Erb now going to drive back by Sam C right. That's the best battle on the racetrack. The battle for position number four, three laps down, five to go. Well, right now, it's starting to be Tyler Irby. He's liking the top side. Seawright trying to make that bottom side come in. Meanwhile, behind them, Kyle Busch just on the outside looking in. He rides back in six as we're halfway home. Four down, four to go. And the 157 of Mike Marler getting it done out in front, trying to defend that championship here tonight. Yeah, and Jensen Ford's got his feet under him now, Ben. He's actually closed the gap these last two laps. Back on your race leader, Mike Marler. Those two cars have got a little bit of a distance between themselves and your third place car, the 18D of Dalton Wilson as trouble for Ethan Dodson as the driver out of Bakersfield, California. The IMCA modified standout slow with the inside of the racetrack down at turns one and two. He's going to try to limp that long horn into the infield, and he does. Yeah, he had some smoke coming out of that race car. Not sure what went wrong, but one thing that's going right is the white flag's there, and it's for Mike Marler off of four. One more time around the speedway for Mikey Marler here in Ibox Springs Heat Race 4. Flat left rear tire for the 174 of Ethan Dodson will end his heat race. Meanwhile, through turns three and four for the final time, the driver of the Ronnie Delk, number 157. Mike Marler puts the blue horn in victory lane in Ibox Springs heat race number four. Second going to go to Jensen Ford. Third to Dalton Wilson and the fourth and final transfer spot goes to Tyler Erb. It'll be Sam Seawright in fifth, Kyle Busch sixth, Chris Chandler seventh, Ryan King eighth, Steve Smith finishes ninth and Ethan Dotson will be credited with position number 10 here at Ibox Springs heat number four. Your fourth and final transfer, Tyler Erb out of New Waverly, Texas in the 1T and third It'll be South, it'll be North Carolina, Fayetteville, North Carolina's Dalton Wilson in the 18D coming home in second. Jensen Ford out of Johnson City, Tennessee, and your winner of Heat Four. He'll start fourth tonight. You're defending. Kyle Larson presents Flow Racing Late Model Cha Late Model Challenge champion. I say that fast. That's Mike Marler, the Delk Equipment Sells, Mesilla Valley Transportation, Petrov Towing, Bill Stein, Cornet Powered Longhorn. One win on the year for Mike Marler. He would love to get another one here in his home state here tonight as DJ Weir moments away from Coltman Farms B-Main number one. Glad to have the folks from Coltman Farms on board. We'll have two B-Mains from them here this evening as you see Mike Marler making his way across the scales as we've done upon the conclusion of each event. For those of you watching at home live on Flow Racing, we will step aside for about 30 seconds as cars make their way across the racetrack and again we'll come back with Coltman Farms B main number one.
Looking for a competitive edge at the track? Trust Sweet Manufacturing for top-of-the-line steering components. Since 1978, we are proud to be employee-owned and carrying on the tradition of quality racing parts. Our state-of-the-art CNC machines allow us to craft the best possible parts for your race car. Don't settle for second best. Let us turn your wheels and choose Sweet Manufacturing for all your racing needs. Find your competitive edge at SweetManufacturing.com. Hi, I'm Tom Buzzy. I'm Alan Buzzy. And the story continues with us. Racing has been part of our family as long as I can remember. Started in dad's garage and finally it grew and grew to busy enough to where dad called me and that's where I joined the business. Some of our customers, they've been customers of ours, some of them since I was in high school. One of the coolest things you hear is someone calls and they say, so-and-so told me to take it to Buzzy. Word of a racer, that means a lot. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Volunteer Speedway here in Bulls Gap, Tennessee, the eastern part of the state, just uh, not too far inside the Tennessee-Virginia border, literally right off Interstate 81. You can see I-81 here from the racetrack. A lot of folks watching at home live on Flow Racing. We thank you and we appreciate you and a lot of folks here on the grounds as well for the second running of the Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge here tonight well we've wrapped up our four heat races here this evening next up will be our two coltman farms b mains so for those of you we have a lot of folks here from nascar land come up from bristol this weekend these are last chance races these races are the drivers that finished fifth on back in their heat races uh, they will race for the top two transfer spots three excuse me the top three good math I need to take my shoes off to figure that out. Ben, the top three in these Coltman's Farms B mains will make their way into tonight's feature event. We'll go ahead and give you the starting lineup here for Coltman Farms B main number one. As again, it begins to stage on the back straightaway. Your pole sitter is going to be the second generation driver out of Benton, Kentucky in the number 96V. That's going to be Tanner English. And on his outside, it'll be the driver of the double nickel chassis in the 55. That's Benji Hicks. Row number two will be Josh Henry in the B double zero. And to his outside, the 1G of Seymour, Tennessee's Rusty Ballinger. Row number three on the inside. Again, his first ever appearance here at Volunteer Speedway in the 20RT. That's going to be Ricky Thornton Jr., the driver out of formerly out of Chandler, Arizona, Adele, Iowa, now calling Martinsville, Indiana home. And on his outside, former Pennsylvania native, now calls Mooresville, North Carolina home in the 8S, the high side tickler, Kyle Strickler. Row four will be Shannon Babb in the 18B out of Mawiko, Illinois, and to his outside out of Ewing, Virginia, the 21K at Dakota Knuckles. We move back to row number five, and on the inside, we find the driver out of Chalk Hill, Pennsylvania, in the 25Z, that's going to be Mason Ziegler, and on his outside out of Loudoun, Tennessee, in the 23, it's Corey Hedgecock. Moving back to row number six, it's Michael Chilton out of Sal Salviza, Kentucky, in the 97, and the 2S of Stormy Scott, he will start 12th on the grid. And scheduled to have three more starters. Kate Loudy, who had trouble getting the fire built under the hood of the 126. He's made his way out on the speedway. Logan Robertson, the broadneck shaker, number 89 out of Waynesburg, Virginia. He's made his way on the track as well. One driver that does not is the 52 of Troy E. So we're scheduled to have 15 cars in this one. And I believe we got two, four, six, eight, ten. Maybe We've 12? got 12. Yeah. Yes, we do. All right, so it's going to be 10 laps the distance. Top three move off to the main event. This is Coltman Farms B-Main number one. We'll have Coltman Farms B-Main number two coming up after this. And then we're going to si sound the horn in the pit area, and we're going to call the feature grid to the, the feature grid for the super late models to staging 50 laps for those drivers. And then we'll wrap things up here tonight with the 20 lap sportsman crate late model feature. So this is it right here. Top three in this race transfer in. The rest of the drivers transfer to the trailer. A lot of good cars scattered throughout the field. Ben Coltman Farms, B main number one, 12 laps the distance, green flags out, top three transfer. And we're, I don't think Kelly Carlton liked what he saw there, so we will see the spring rhythm caution come out and one more chance there for the 96V of Tanner English. Maybe get on the wild pedal a little too soon as you got Kentucky 
in North Carolina on the front row of Coltman Farms B Main number one. Well, Benji Hicks has had a pretty decent start to the year this year. Of course, he ran with us in speed weeks. He can't blame Tanner English for wanting to get a good start. We try it again. Same result. Much better start, though. Tanner English can jump out to the early race lead. English, your leader down the back straightaway, off into three and four. Benji Hicks got his hands full. He's got Henry right there with him. But lap number one is going to go to Tanner English. Three wide for third at the line. Look at My that. My goodness. Ricky Thorpe Jr. tries to drive down to the inside. He's going to take that third and final transfer spot away momentarily. Shuffle Josh. Uh, Henry back to the four spot. Rusty Ballinger is back there. Here comes Kyle Strickler down to the inside in the eight. Out front, it's all Tanner English. Hicks in second, and now Strickler goes to work on the bottom side through one and two. He'll go around Henry, and now Strickler sets his sights on Ricky Thornton Jr., the 20 RT. That's the final transfer. That is indeed the final transfer spot. The eight of Kyle Strickler on the outside looking in. Josh Henry in the outside looking in. Only three transfer out of this one. Top three drivers have separated them themselves just a little bit from the rest of the field and by just a little bit Ben here at Bulls Gap that's all of about two or three car lengths the <laughs> margin that Ricky Thornton Jr. in the 20 RT has on your screen over the eight of Kyle Strickler. Uh, you're seeing these guys starting to search around a little bit and don't look now but Hicks starting to close in on Tanner English as we're halfway home five down five to go and your three transfer cars right now Tanner English Benji Hicks Ricky Thornton Jr. and it's Strickler now he's got to find something DJ in the eight car he's going to be watching this main event here tonight. Yeah he's actually closed in just a little bit as we take a look there at the top two we shuffle back now to third and fourth there's the 20 RT of Ricky Thornton Jr. You see Kyle Strickler trying that lower to middle groove down in turns one and two right now just unable to work his way around the uh, the 20 RT of Ricky Thornton Jr. This time by three laps to go the Sands are running out of the hourglass for the high side tickler. Yeah Strickler's trying a few different things just cannot quite get to Ricky Thornton Jr. Thornton slips up a little bit off of four there and Strickler closes it within a car length, but he is running out of time, DJ, with just two laps to go. Just two laps remaining around this 4 tenths mile oval as Strickler again tries the bottom side of the racetrack down in turns uh, one and two. White flag in the air, final time around for your race leader, Tanner English. Benji Hicks second, there's third. Ricky Thornton Jr. trying to hang on for one more lap. Down the back straightaway, Hicks tries to make a run on Tanner English. Will he get there? Not going to do it. The winner of Coleman Farms, B main number one, Tanner English. Benji Hicks going to cross in the second spot. The third and final transfer position will go to Ricky Thornton Jr. on the outside looking in. It's going to be Kyle Strickler in the eight. The boo of Josh Henry, the 21K of Dakota Knuckles, the 1G of Rusty Ballinger, the 18 of Shannon Babb, the 1 of Kate Loudy, Michael Chilton of the 97, the 2 of Stormy Scott, and the 89 of Logan Robertson. Your third and final transfer, now residing in Martinsville, Indiana, Ricky Thornton Jr. in the 20RT, coming home in second out of Mount Airy, North Carolina. It's Benji Hicks in the 55, and your winner, Tanner English out of Benton, Kentucky, the M&M Paint and Construction, Viper Risk Management Motorsports, Base Racing Fuels, H&A Development, Capital Waste, Supreme Enterprises, all sponsors on that Clements Powered Longhorn for Tanner English. One win on the year, and he picks up the win here in Coltman Farms B Main number one as we are moments away from Coltman Farms B Main number two. It will once again be 12 laps in distance with the top three drivers making their way into the main event. So the top three in that race, Ben, they start again. We lock 16 in through the heat races. So the three drivers in that B main, they will start They will start inside behind them. They'll start 17th, 19th, and 21st. The three transfers yep. out of this B main, Coltman Farms B main number two, they will start 18th, 20th, and 22nd. Well, here's how they're going to line up here in Coleman Farms B main number two on the pole out of Kingston, Georgia. The 31 of Tyler Millwood into his outside Sam Seawright out of Fort Payne, Alabama. We move back to row number two, and on the inside, we find the driver of the 109. That's Eli Beats, and on his outside out of Las Vegas, Nevada, on the Wells and Sons Motorsports 76B, it's Kyle Busch. Row three will be Ohio's Devin Moran in the 99M, and to his outside, North Carolina's Chris Chandler in car eight. Move back to row number four on the inside in the J27. That's going to be Jaden Frame. And on his outside, Jaden Frame scheduled to be there and scheduled to be the 30 of Ryan King on the outside. Not seeing them yet. We do see the three out there of Steve Smith. Now the 22 of Brent Cornett makes his way out. Scheduled to start inside of row five with Smith to his outside. And John Tweed's made the call. He'll start inside of row number six. 
Don't know if we'll see Ethan Dotson or not. The 174 and the final two uh, starters scheduled to be Austin Neely and Chase Briscoe. I don't think we're going to see the one of those drivers as again after this one, they're going to sound the 10 minute horn in the pit area and we're going to bring the A main grid to the staging lanes and find out who's going to win $20,000 in the second annual Kyle Larson Presents Flow Racing Elite Model Challenge here at Volunteer Speedway. Well, there's a good look at Kyle Busch, a former prelude to the dream winner in a dirt late model at Eldora Speedway. Uh, the good news is he's got dirt late model experience, but again, he's a former prelude winner. The bad news is that's been about 10 years ago or so now that, uh, that he picked a up 12, that it was 11. It was, I was going to yeah. say it was 2011, 12 years yeah. ago. But I tell you what, he's got a good starting spot here on the outside of row number two. He's trying to race his way into the show. Again, the top three will transfer to the Kyle Larson Presents Flow Racing Late Model Challenge. Ben, 10 laps in distance here in Coltman Farms B-Main number two. Tyler Millwood on the pole. Sam Seawright on the outside. Green flag is out and Coltman Farms B-Main two is underway. Second and final B-Main presented by Coltman Farms underway and it's Seawright looking to the outside of the 31 car of Millwood down the back straightaway side by side for the lead. Hang on, beating and banging back in the pack. We stay clean and green. Who's going to lead lap number one? It's going to be Seawright. Kyle Bush did not get a good start, and he falls back to position number five. Yeah, he kind of got beat around there on the back straightaway, and then he got hung up on the outside. He's going to dive back down underneath Devin Moran down the back straightaway. Oh, oh no! Devin Moran goes around off the nose of Stevie Smith's number three, and that will bring out the spring rhythm caution flag here in Coltman Farms B Main number two. Ouch. All right, so two laps in the books, two down, eight to go, and Devin Moran getting turned up there in turn three and four. We'll see if we have the five-star race car bodies instant replay that or not. Is There was a whole lot of shuffling going in the first two laps of that one, DJ. We saw Kyle Busch kind of get roughed up a little bit, and then you looked up, and the 99 of Moran was getting turned. Looked like maybe off the nose of Steve Smith, and you see Steve Smith, a little bit of damage on the left front of that nose, and there's yeah, the five-star race car his, bodies. Yep, Mr. and Rico. I don't know if it was any fault of Steve Smith. They were all kind of bouncing around like a bunch of pinballs there on the back straightaway. Ooh. Stevie Smith Steve Smith got a real good run going into the corner, and Devin Moran, I, I, I'm not behind the wheel, so I'm not going to pretend to know. I'm certainly no expert, as some folks might say, but uh, Devin Moran maybe backed <laughs> off the throttle to try to drive back down underneath Kyle Busch there in the corner. Corner. And the end result was one car slowing up, one car speeding up, and they come together over in the corner. So that's a tough break for the driver, the Roger Sellers, number 99 of Devin Moran, as he will have to fall to the tail end of the field. Sam Seawright, your race leader, now stopped here at the end of the front straightaway. So again, this is your final preliminary race of the evening. Coltman Farms, B Main number two. Ben, as you mentioned after this, the 10 minute horn will sound and these drivers will have 10 minutes to present their car to the staging lane. And then we will roll them on the racetrack and get underway with tonight's 50 lap $20,000 to win. Kyle Larson presents late model challenge. So Seawright's going to find yep. himself at the front of the field in what we like to call the Delaware double file restart. For those of you not familiar with that, it simply means the race leader is by himself out front. The second place driver will get his choice of inside or outside lane. Once that driver chooses his lane, as you see there, Tyler Millwood has chosen the inside lane. It's not the choose rule like NASCAR. Instead, they stagger accordingly. So the second place driver chooses the inside lane. That means the third place driver goes outside. The fourth place driver goes inside and so on and so forth through the field. Might have been Sam Seawright stopped to talk to an official and now they're looking. They look through three and four, maybe making sure there's no debris on the racetrack. And it looks like the officials are going to make their way back to the infield. So we're going to show them one to go. The field is racked and stacked. Delaware double file restart and Wesley Womack I tell you what man he didn't come here tonight to be the flagman but he's done a fantastic job and we appreciate everything Wesley has done for us here tonight he absolutely has as the yellow lights have been turned off green flag I got your text DJ fella the green flag gonna wave this time by once again two laps down eight laps remaining Sam C right out front top three transfer Coltman Farms B main number two green flags back out and the field heads off into one and two and it's C right your leader and in the second spot right now it's Millwood but here comes Eli Beats putting the whip to it and the three of Steve Smith as we expected nose damage and also a tire has gone awry up in turns one and two there's a lot of things you can get by without DJ 
The tire that is bouncing. Look out, guys. It's coming to see. No, yep, don't, move. don't do it. Don't, don't do it. try to stop don't, it. Don't do, do not it. be the hero. Don't, don't. There you go. <laughs> that tire, I don't know if you saw, that tire was every bit as high, if not, not higher, than the scoreboard Look down in turns one and two. You know, sir, you can have that tire. That's yours now. Congratulations. I don't think Steve Smith's going to like that too much. But no. that's Maybe that was, you know, Steve Smith, maybe that was payback from the uh, from the original Eldora Million when Donnie I, got the win and oh. he thought, you know what? No, it probably was not. Easy. Hey, I, I mentioned earlier, here's a look at your five-star race car bodies, instant reap. Nope, psych. There's uh, a look at the nose, I mean. <laughs> that is, here, here it is. Go. There it is. And Watch we, how high this thing gets, man. Holy Boom. smokes. I told you it was high as the scoreboard The right fact there. that it found its way to the end. And the fact, I don't know which videographer that was that uh, grabbed that, but kudos to you, sir. It had to be, had to be the Hall of Famer, Steve Gigas, right? Know, we got Blaise Dillner. It might have been Blaze Dillner. Yeah. Steve Gigas, Blaise Dillner, Nate Hartman. I don't know. Whichever one of you did that. It was not It us. was Blaze Dillner. How about that? Good there job, go. Blaze Dillner. Great job. Yeah, that was man. a heck of a shot that down there. That was awesome. No, I, I, I joke about that. Steve Smith, I mentioned this on the air earlier. What a great guy, man. Had a lot of fun talking to him and, and his son, Dakota James, back in the pits earlier. Just, well, I don't uh, know if Devin Moran likes him a lot right now. Well, but he may not. <laughs> uh, but, uh, hey, but I, I did. I had a great time talking to Steve. And as I mentioned earlier on the broadcast, kind of reminisced about the good old days, as all of us race fans like to do. Two laps down, eight laps to go. Coltman Farms B-Main number two gets back underway with Sam Seawright leading the field. Seawright back on the loud pedal. Eli beats along with Millwood. Battle for that second spot. But behind them, it's Kyle Busch. And now Busch going to fall back to fifth as the eight-car Chris Chandler goes around him. We work off turns three and four, and it's Sam Seawright, the Alabama driver, leading the way. Tell you what, I think that third spot is still up for grabs here, Ben. Eli Beats doing a phenomenal job, as he always does here. But, man, they are just like a hungry pack of wolves back there behind him. Kyle Busch in the 76B, Chris Chandler in the eight. Hat tip to him because he's done a great job. And the uh, 27 of Jaden Frame as well, all back there battling for positions four, five, and six. They're ready to pounce if something happens to the 31 of Millwood or the 109 of Beats as we come to the halfway signal. Well, we're halfway home, and right now, the thing I noticed that battle for second, Second, as you got Millwood, he likes the low side. You got Beats up top and Kyle Busch trying to get there, running out of time. Back behind them, though, Chandler and Frame having a good battle. But the driver having the best time right now is Sam Seawright because he's all by his lonesome out front by about 10 car lengths, and he's got less than four laps remaining. Eli Beats really working that high side hard down in turns one and two. He tosses that car up in the very top of the racetrack going in and kind of diamonds off the corner just a little bit. I don't know that he's gaining much ground on Tyler Millwood. He's certainly not losing ground. As you see right there, he goes in high. And that time he actually didn't come down low. He kind of kept it up on the high side of the racetrack. He'd love to gain just one more starting spot. It's not a huge difference between starting 22nd and starting 20th, Ben. But every position matters, especially at a racetrack like Bulls Gap. It's interesting. Two different grooves could be so equal. And that's what we've seen out of that in one and two. But we've got the white flag in there. And Coltman Farms B-Main number two. One more time around the speedway for Sam Seawright. Two wins on the year. He'd love to get number three tonight. And he leads him down the back straightaway. Indeed, he does. And he's got about 10 car lengths over the battle for second as he comes off quarter number four. Checkered flag is out. It'll be Sam Seawright getting the win at Coltman Farms B Main number two, Tyler Millwood second, Eli Beats third. Those three drivers will transfer the A Main. Kyle Bush finishes fourth, Chris Chandler fifth, Jaden Frame sixth, Devin Moran seventh, Brett Cornett eighth, John Tweed ninth, and Steve Smith credited with the 10th position. Taking your third transfer spot, Eli Beats out of Knoxville, Tennessee in the 109. Coming home in second, Tyler Millwood in the 31 out of Kingston, Georgia, and your winner out of Fort Payne, Alabama, Sam Seawright, the Oliver Racing Engine, Rocket XR1, Agcor still, JNR Excavating, and Farm Systems, sponsored also by Grove Pediatric Therapy, number 16 for Sam Seawright. He picks up the win in Coltman Farms, B Main, number two. And just like that, DJ, we are calling the main event grid to staging for tonight's super late model feature 50 laps, $20,000 going to the winner. Again, main event coming up just a moment for the Super Late Models. Great to grab you something to eat or drink downstairs as the Super Late Model starting grid is being called to the staging lanes. We're going to step aside for a second. Thanks some of our great marketing partners. And when we come back, we'll be here at The Gap, Volunteer Speedway, Bulls Gap, Tennessee. The second annual Kyle Larson presents Flow Racing Late Model Challenge.
Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Volunteer Speedway for the Kyle Larson Presents Flow Racing Late Model Challenge is the first car. None other than Kyle Larson. Has he wants to way. race. Yeah, he wants to race. <laughs> He's made his way out on the track. They're doing the crossover right now, allowing the crews to make their way down into the infield. And this field is going to make their way in the Speedway, Ben, and stage here on the front straightaway. Of course, 22 drivers able to transfer their way in through both heat races and and B mains and uh, Kyle Larson, one of the folks, obviously his namesake is on this race, puts this race on, says, you know what? And he says, it just wouldn't feel right if we didn't have uh, my NASCAR guys make this starting lineup. We know a lot of folks came here to see Kyle Busch and Chase Briscoe. So Kyle Busch and Chase Briscoe will make the event as Kyle Larson's provisional starting in the 23rd and 24th starting position. And it's worth saying this event slated to start 22 cars. It didn't take away any starting spots from anybody exactly. else. So he's added that uh, to a Additional starters here tonight and again 50 laps the distance Mike Marler got the job done a year ago who is it gonna be tonight as you see the field starting to assemble on the front straightaway and I tell you what as they make them out what a star field we had here on a Thursday night in East Tennessee yeah it absolutely is and of course you've got the stars the dirt late model racing and you've got someone back in the period called it kind of a prelude light in, in a way which is maybe a good way to put it but uh, Kyle, Kyle Larson, Kyle Bush, and Chase Brisk. We've actually got a graphic here that shows a, a uh, kind of a comparative comparison is maybe even the right word, but for those folks watching at home on Flow Racing, here is your Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge driver spotlight and how they have done so far here this evening. Well, obviously, Larson, a lot of experience, and yes. he's done very well. He's going to start outside front row. Kyle Busch, I would make the argument. I mean, he's made an improvement throughout the night. We'll see what he can he do has, in the main event. Yeah. Chase Briscoe might have got dinged up a little bit there in qualifying, but he's going to make it out. He's going to start on the back row here tonight, and we'll see if those drivers can do anything. But I tell you what, uh, something that you just can't look past is the driver that you've got starting on the pole here tonight in Jonathan Davenport. He's getting ready to run a NASCAR truck, and he's getting ready to run a NASCAR Cup Series car coming up at Bristol Motor Speedway. And he would love to start tonight with a $20,000 win. So let's go ahead and start and talk about who's going to be starting where in this main event tonight. Starting on the pole out of Blairsville, Georgia, it'll be Jonathan Davenport in the 49 and to his outside the six of Kyle Larson out of Elk Grove, California. Row number two on the inside, it'll be the driver out of Martinsville, Indiana. It's going to be the new deal, Hudson O'Neill in the rocket chassis number one and on his outside out of Winfield, Tennessee in the Ronnie Delcone 157. It'll be the Winfield Warrior, Mike Marler. We move back to row number three and on the inside we find Mac Daddy Dale McDowell out of Chickamauga, Georgia in the 17M and on his outside it'll be the driver out of Lancaster, South Carolina. A good qualifying effort and a great heat race run for the 24D of Michael Brown. Row number four on the inside out of Newport, Tennessee. It's going to be the Newport Nightmare, Jimmy Owens, in the number, the Kohler Motorsports number 20. And on his outside, out of Johnson City, Tennessee, the dealership, Jensen Ford, and the McCarter Brothers Racing number 83. Row five on the inside, the seven of Ricky Weiss out of Headingley, Manitoba, and to his outside, the 101 of Forest Trent out of Morristown, Tennessee. Moving back to row six, it's Chris Smokey Madden out of Great Court, South Carolina, and the 44 to his outside, Fayetteville, North Carolina's Dalton Wilson. Wilson in the 18D. Moving back to row at number seven, it'll be Cameron Marler out of Winfield, Tennessee in the 99, and the 76 of Brandon Overton out of Evans, Georgia. We move back to row number eight. There we find the driver of the double nickel, number 79 out of Clover, South Carolina. That's going to be Hell's Bells, Ross Bales, and on his outside, it'll be the driver out of New Waverly, Texas, and the best performance motorsports. Number one, it's Turbo Tyler Erb. Row number nine will be Tanner English out of Benton, Kentucky, first time ever here for the 96V driver, and to his outside out of Fort Payne, Alabama, Sam MC right in car 16. Moving back to row number 10 out of Mount Airy, North Carolina, Benji Hicks in the 55. And on his outside, out of Kingston, Georgia in the 31, that is Tyler Millwood. Row 11 out of Martinsville, Indiana, Ricky Thornton Jr. in the 20 RT into his outside, Knoxville, Tennessee's 109 for Eli Beats. And your final two starters, the two provisionals that we mentioned earlier. It'll be Las Vegas, Nevada's Kyle Bush in the Wells and Sons Motorsports number 76B. And on his outside, out of Mitchell, Indiana, in the Kyle Strickler Racing. 
number 14, it's Chase Briscoe. Look at the infield here. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a fraction, but I almost feel like I'm at Josh King's Foreign Speedway right now <laughs> with everybody in the infield to watch this main event here tonight. Yeah, Lincoln, Pennsylvania or Port Royal yes, or something. Yeah. Look I've seen that. Peebly like this before, too. Yeah, look, look at all the people lined down up there. around the inside of the race. There, again, a mass of humanity here tonight. And uh, I tell you what, a lot of people didn't think this event would happen. There was a lot of people on social media that said we were lying, that we weren't going to try to race. And here we are tonight. And we appreciate everybody. What a great looking shot there. As you see Jonathan Davenport and Kyle Larson, your front row behind them. This is awesome. Yeah, I the, am the loving this. The winner's performance drone has done a spectacular uh, job here this evening. There's it's, Huddy it's and Marler. How about, can Marler go back to back? He could. He very well could. And, and what's going to be the key here is two things. Number one, and they kind of it's kind of a 1a and 1b right it's going to be when they get the lap traffic obviously right this is not an easy track to pass on 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 any given day the size and shape of the racetrack it's just what it is but number two when you turn 12 13 second laps on a racetrack like this you put 24 cars out there ben it's only going to take about six or seven laps for the leaders for the front of the field to catch the tail end of this 24 car starting lineup well, yeah, lap traffic happens often and early. And yeah. the thing, if you stay green, that's going to be key. 50 laps a long time around here. And, yeah, make it no bones about it. The way this racetrack's configured, it's very technical. And it can be. If somebody doesn't mess up, it can be hard to pass here. We saw in one of those B mains, we had two different drivers running two different grooves. I believe it was Eli Beats and Tyler Millwood. And they were pretty much dead even in two different grooves. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, man, you, you made a really good point. Yeah, they were almost dead even. And so it's going to be a game, a high-speed game of cat and mouse. Again, especially when they get the lap traffic. It's going to be a chess match to see who can figure out the line to go and who can maybe predict that line the best. you got to set your move up maybe a lap or two in advance. They've done just a wee little bit of work around this racetrack here. You're going to see cars spread out on both the top and the bottom in turns one and two. I think that's a given. I think the, uh, the telltale sign is going to be turns three and four. Number one, what happens in turns three and four? Number two, who can find the best group the quickest? Well, there's two guys on the front row that know each other very well. Let's not forget the guy on the pole. He drove for Rumley Motorsports for a lot, for well, not a lot of years, but a few years, a lot of success. And the guy starting outside, well, that, of course, that is the Rumley Motorsports number six. And they are going to lead us the green flag. But Hudson O'Neill, we saw it. He struggled to start Speed Weeks, and then he got hot. And he had an ama one of the most amazing runs I've ever seen to wrap Speed Weeks up at Volusia Speedway Park during the Dirt Car Nationals. And Mike Marler, man, he showed us how it was done here last year. Mikey starting outside of oh, row number two. Yeah, he, he, got was, a, he was in our blind spot. He right was letting there. everybody know that that's where he plans to be at that's the end right. of the night. That's DJ, exactly you're right. gonna, you are going to talk to the top three down there in Sweet Manufacturing Victory Lane when those, this one is over. But 50 laps, 20,000 on the line. And guess what? Lights are out, my friend. Caution lights have been turned off. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 laps is the distance. A $20,000 payday on the line. The second annual running of the Kyle Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge presented by Flow Racing is about to go green here at Volunteer Speedway with Jonathan Davenport and Kyle Larson bringing them to the green. Jonathan Davenport punches the button first and he'll take them off into one and two. Larson in second, Hudson O'Neill down in third. Now here comes Marler to his outside, Mike Marler up to third. Mike Marler in that third spot trying to hold off Hudson O'Neill. Larson going to go way high down in turns three and four. Jonathan Davenport leads lap one, Larson second, Mike Marler third. Marler sits back in third. Now he sets his sights on Larson. Davenport setting cell out front in this one. Davenport already five wins on the year. Three of those came out at Votto Speedway Park to start the year. And right now he leads the way and he's got Kyle Larson in pursuit. Marler third, Hudson O'Neill in fourth. And I tell you what, Michael Brown has had a good run so far tonight. He sits back in fifth. Yeah, the 24D car looks really good. Again, there's two different lines being run by your second and third place cars right now. As Jonathan Davenport stays out front, Larson. Larson's maybe a little bit better than JD. Down in turns one and two, down in turns three and four. Larson going to go around the high side. Davenport on the bottom. They come across the line this time. Four laps in the books. And it's a six-tenths of a second advantage for the driver of the number 49, Jonathan Davenport. Larson second. Marler third. Hudson O'Neill fourth. Michael Brown right now rounds out the top five cars. Again, different lines being run by the top two down in turns three and four. Working early in this one. And now Larson closing back in just a little bit on Davenport. Those two have broke away from the pack. Hudson O'Neill back in fourth trying to get to Marler in third. They're side by side, and you got battles back in the pack as we go split screen action as they work all four. And Dell McDowell and the 17M, he moves around the 24 car. 
Yeah, Dale McDowell right now in the 17 in. Back in fifth. This way. Yep, up yep. into the fifth spot, taking that spot away from the 24 D of Michael Brown, Jensen Ford right there as well. And here we are. Look at this traffic, Yes, yeah, seven laps into the race, just as we said, and your race leaders have caught the tail end of the field. Jonathan Davenport and Kyle Larson. Larson's got to run down the front stretch. And Larson's going to throw a slider off into one and two up in front of Davenport. Davenport turns back down the hill. The field, the crowd comes to their feet off into three and four. Who's going to lead this time out of four, DJ? They go side by side through turns three and new four. Leader. And it's a lap traffic. You do have a new leader, Kyle Larson, going to put the Rudley Six out front. And, man, he's got some decisions to make now, Ben. Oh, man. Ricky oh. Ford Jr. going to call it a night as he ducks down to the bottom. Meanwhile, Davenport dicing through lap traffic. We got 10 down, 40 to go. And let's let it stay green as they work off into one and two with Kyle Larson leading the way now over car number 49 of Jonathan Davenport. Sam C. Wright also out of the party in the 16. Jonathan Davenport, though, as you might imagine, not going to let Kyle Larson just drive away from the field. Larson going to go to the outside to Chase Briscoe, put him a lap down, but now he's got the 55 of Benji Hicks running up high in the same line. Davenport in second. Hudson O'Neill's moved into third. Back and forth now, Dell McDowell. Marler has slid back to fifth, and McDowell is on the move. We'll keep an eye on that driver. As right now, there's action all over the speedway. Now you got a battle for the lead off of two down the back straightaway as Davenport ducks down to the inside off of turn number four. Larson's going to hold serve, and they are in heavy lap traffic. Yeah, Larson just trying to find a way around that 55 of Benji Hicks. He's not able to dive down to the bottom because there's lap traffic down there as well. Eli beats down there in the 109. Davenport right now again trying to play that high-speed game of chess and find his move when he might go to work back by the oh. six. Just we say that, Larson throws a slider on the 55 of Benji Hicks down in one and two. He clears him momentarily. Hicks though, tries to drive back down to the inside. Right side of your screen, Hudson O'Neill sits in third. Del McDowell trying to get to him. Michael Brown right there as well. Huddy sits in the third spot. Out front, though, it's Larson. He's got a little bit of breathing room as he works down the back straightaway. We work lap number 16 of this 50-lap affair. A little bit of breathing room you mentioned, Ben. There's a whole seven-tenths of a second this time as Kyle Larson has, <laughs> quote, unquote, the biggest advantage. Oh, he bobbles. Yeah, he does. He bobbles. Maybe jump the cushion just a little bit down in turns one and two. That allows Davenport to get another run in three and four. Davenport right there. Meanwhile, Hudson O'Neill trying to reel him in. He sits back in the third spot as it has been a good one so far as Larson gets a good run off of two, but Millwood slides up in front of him. Larson briefly gets off the throttle, and you got to think Davenport's waiting on one little mistake out of Kyle Larson. He absolutely is, John. The Davenport's no dummy, and there's a reason he won $2 million uh -huh. last year as Larson bounces off the wall, going into turn number one, trying to work by the 31 of Millwood. Again, Davenport, he's back there. He's ready to pounce, man. Like you said, he's just, he's waiting for Larson to make a mistake. And we know Kyle Larson, there's no slowing down. It doesn't matter how big of a lead or how small of a lead he has. He's going to throw caution to the wind when he's in the six. He's going to go warp speed right now. It's a two-car breakaway as Davenport looks to the inside of Larson off of turn number four. 20 in the books, 30 to go. And Kyle Larson's going to throw a slider on Dalton Wilson to put him down a lap. Wilson turns back down the hill. Back in the second spot, it's still Davenport. Third, Hudson O'Neill. Fourth, McDowell. Fifth is Marler. i tell you what, I, I hope this is coming across as well to the fans at home as it is to the folks here. This has been one phenomenal late model feature in the early stages of this one. 21 lap score as we look back now on the battle for third and fourth. Dale McDowell quietly picking his way up into position number four, as we mentioned, setting his sights on Hudson O'Neill. Those drivers now battling through lap traffic as well. Yeah, Huddy back there in heavy lap traffic with Millwood. McDowell right there behind him. You see that on the right side of your screen, your leader Larson on the left side closing in on halfway this time by. They will complete lap number 23. 23 down, 27 to go, and Larson and Davenport chasing each other through the cushion, or should I say Davenport's chasing Larson, and now Larson closing in on more lap traffic. Here comes Jonathan Davenport. He has a, the lap traffic he's closing in on as well is your 15th and 16th place cars. It's Tyler Erb in the best performance, number one in 15th, and Ross Bales in the Hicks 79 running in 16th position. Behind them on the right-hand side of your screen at the halfway point, Ben Dale McDowell down to the inside of Hudson O'Neill on a battle for third. Good battle back there. Meanwhile, look at the lap traffic in front of your leaders on the left side of your screen. Now it's going to be Larson down low. Davenport up top. Can Davenport capitalize? They come off before we have a new leader. Yes, sir, you will. 
Jonathan Davenport back to the lead. Oh, oh this is fun. Oh, man, this has been a great race so far. This lap traffic is bonkers just in front of your race leader. Davenport able to move back out front. 24 laps to go. Larson going to try to drive back down to the inside. Man, oh, man, where is he going to go? There's nowhere for the sixth car to go. Here comes Davenport to the outside. And Davenport now going to go around Tyler down the back straight and put him down a lap. Larson now will go to the top side. That's where we saw Davenport get back to the lead. Davenport, your leader, about three car lengths as we complete now with just 23 laps to go. In the lap before that, Ben, just off the screen, the 17M of Dale McDowell was able to work by Hudson O'Neill and grab that third spot. O'Neill's back to fourth. Mike Marler right now rounding out the top five. Jimmy Owens off the pace in the Kohler Motorsports number 20. He's yielded down to the very inside of the racetrack right there to the inside of your leader, D uh, J.D. And Owens going to call it a night. We'll stay clean and green. We come around to complete lap number 30. 30 on the board, 20 to go. Larson trying to get back to Davenport as they go around Forrest Trent. Meanwhile, back in the third spot, Dell McDowell slow and steady working the low side of the racetrack. Can he get there? Imagine that. Dale McDowell slow <laughs> and steady on the inside of the racetrack. Never would have guessed. Mr. Consistency of the 17M. He is indeed one of the fastest cars on the racetrack, quietly closing in on your race leaders. Sands running out of the hourglass. Those were now inside a 20 lap to go. Davenport, Larson, McDowell, Marler now up to fourth. O'Neill rounds out the top five. Chris Madden rides back in six. Slider for the lead through uh -oh. turns one and two. Davenport turns back down the hill. You got the battle for the lead on the left side. You got the battle for foot fifth on back on the right. Davenport and Larson going at it. Another slider into one and two. I bet there's going to be. Pay me, DJ. There it is. Oh, Dad Larson up in front of Davenport. Davenport back down the hill. Oh, off into three and four as we work to come around and come race to 16 to go. And Larson catches back creep. Davenport back to the lead. Spoiler is flapping in the wind. The race <laughs> on the spoiler for the six. Another slider. We got a banger at Bulls Gap, baby. Davenport drives back down under him. They're throwing haymakers at each other oh. this time by 15 to go. Oh, this is good oh. stuff. And don't look now. Dell McDowell's reeling them both in. They're going to go slider fest. McDowell might get them on the bottom. Inside of 15 to go down the back straightaway. This is fun, man. McDowell and Marler's there as well. Marler closing in on both of them, too. It's going to be fun uh -oh. because McDowell's uh -oh, DJ. a completely different line. Uh-oh, slider, slider. Yep. Oh, and Larson's going to take it away from Davenport out of two. The place is going nuts as they head off into three and four. Holy cow. I, McDowell's going to win this thing, man. Here comes Tell McDowell. McDowell. On the bottom. McDowell's about to work by the 49 of Jonathan Davenport. They go side by side for second off into turns one and two. 13 laps to go. Flo Racing, are you entertained on a Thursday night? Oh, thank you, Vic and Krista Hill. This is fantastic. Maybe the best race at Bulls Gap in over a decade is right now. Larson just pounding the cushion, and he's driving away from him, DJ. Kyle Larson wow. has found a group to his liking. He's gotten comfortable in the Rumley number six, and he is now stretched out to about a half straightaway or three-fourths of a straightaway advantage over Jonathan Davenport. Just as we say that, though, this time by 10 laps to go, and once again, heavy lap traffic directly in front of your race leader. Well, I think the key was he knocked part of a spoiler off, and that got him a lot faster. On the right side of your screen, oh. Davenport inside. Larson throws caution to the win every lap. <laughs> Meanwhile, care. on the right side of your screen, McDowell goes to work on Jonathan Davenport for position at number two there as they work to the lap traffic at Tanner English. And I tell you what, McDowell's had a good race car here tonight. Yes, he has. The veteran Dale McDowell down to the inside. He knows that he's got less than 10 laps left. He's got to work by Davenport, and this is an opportunity to catch Larson as we say that. Larson, as you see on the left-hand side of your screen, making quick work of lap traffic. If he clears the 99 <laughs> of Marler, and he does, he's got mostly a clear track in front of him. Meanwhile, McDowell up to second. Davenport back to third. Marler sits in the fourth spot. And now up to fifth is Chris Matt and Hudson O'Neill sixth. And it's Weiss, Ford, Brown, Overton. That's your top ten with just seven laps remaining. This has been a fun one, DJ. Kyle, it sure has, man. Kyle Larson is now stretched out to almost a full straightaway lead. As again, it gets a little <laughs> too high down in turns one, three and four. Man, it doesn't matter if he's out front and he slips up. He's again. an animal. He he's is an giving animal. fans their money's worth. Kevin Rumley's like. having a heart attack. He's like, man, you got a straightaway lead. That's Stop right. it, Kyle. Five laps to go. Five laps to go. And Kyle Larson leads the way here tonight at Bulls Gap, trying to get his second late model win of the year. And 
as he has got a full straightaway advantage over Dell McDowell, who rides in second. Back in third, the 49 car of Jonathan Davenport. Fourth, Marler, Chris Madden in fifth. And the laps are ticking away. And the guy out front by 3.1 seconds, Kyle Larson right now. As Larson has just punished the top side of this racetrack. He got the lead. He lost the lead. He got it back. And now he's just three laps away from a $20,000 payday here tonight. Dell McDowell, a great run in second. Meanwhile, back in third, it's Davenport trying to keep Marler behind him for that final podium spot. Kyle Larson, though, the man on the mission, off into turns one and two. Just two laps to go. He'll close in on lap traffic down the back straightaway. He doesn't have to push, push the issue too hard, though. Is that a turn number four? The white flag is out. White flag in the air. One more time around the speedway here tonight for Kyle Larson, the Elk Grove, California driver down the back straightaway. He's come to Tennessee. He's brought the rumbling number six. And tonight, going to victory lane, $20,000 richer. It's Kyle Larson in car number six. I think he's got a flat tire at the line. He doesn't matter. He gets the win. McDowell in second. Davenport comes home third. Marler fourth. Chris Madden in fifth. Then it's Hudson O'Neill, Ricky Weiss, Ford, Brown, and Overton. Your top ten. And a flat Flat left rear tire on Kyle Larson's car. How about that one? Race fans finishing third here tonight out of Blairsville, Georgia. Jonathan Davenport second out of Chickamauga, Georgia. It's Dell McDowell. And how about it for your winner out of Elk Grove, California? It's Kyle Larson picking up the win. Flat left rear tire and all. It doesn't matter. He's going to take the Flow Racing, HendrickCars.com, Bill Stein, d &E Marine, Mega Plumbing, Hot Rod Septic Treatment, Valvoline, Senior Life Insurance Company, and Wheeler Metals, Cornet Powered Longhorn to Victory Lane, $20,000 richer. And race fans, did you have a good time here tonight? We appreciate you coming out, spending your hard-earned money. Don't forget, we got a sportsman feature. And if you looked at the parking lot, you're not going anywhere very fast anyway. You might as well stick around and check this one out. Heck of a race here tonight, and Kyle Larson, unbelievable. So it might have been uh, Brad Hockaday saying might maybe a little bit of contact with Brandon Overton cutting that tire down, and that tire hangs on just long enough for him to get the checkered flag. And we'll send him down through post-race tech, and then we'll bring him back out to the front straightaway. Dustin Jarrett's made his way down. He'll take, talk to your top three finishers here tonight. What a race here tonight at Volunteer Speedway. As again, Orson taking the win over Dell McDowell, Jonathan Davenport, Mike Marler, Chris Madden. That was your top five. McDowell has cleared post-race tech. As you see Larson down there, the team getting a word with him. Jonathan Davenport going through tech. Again, sportsman feature coming up after this one. And again, it's a jam-packed parking lot. Might as well stick around and enjoy the show. As Cody Early is going to be bringing you the call on that one. And what a show here tonight at Volunteer Speedway. Again, outran Mother Nature and outran an amazing field of competition, Kyle Larson. So the official rule, because of the droop check, because Larson came down there with a flat tire, they have to put another tire on there to check the droop, and then they'll bring Larson out to the front straightaway. So that is the rule. That's how the rule works. If you've got a flat tire that you put the tire on, and they check the droop that way. Jonathan Davenport has cleared post-race tech, making his way out. You're going to see him put a new left rear tire on Kyle Larson's car. And Ray Cook down there to check the droop on that race car. What a race here tonight, man. I tell you what, slide job city. And it was like Larson and Davenport were in a couple of sprint cars here tonight because it was slide job city here at the gap. As you see that flat left rear tire coming off Larson's car, you can see it down there from the winner's performance drone. And so to check that droop on the left rear, you see the left rear tire going on there and We'll wait for that to clear. So waiting for the celebration on the front straight. But again, race fans, thank you so much. Whether you watched the flow racing here in attendance, amazing crowd here tonight. We do appreciate you spending your hard-earned money with us. As Kyle Larson's ready to come celebrate, man. I tell you what, last year he came up short. You could tell he was disappointed he couldn't get the win. Fast time last year. Nothing like a little drama at the end with a flat tire. And he is going to make his way up there. 
as they're gonna make his way up to the scales. I tell you what, this has been quite the experience down here waiting on that. So we got a new left rear tire. We've got Ray Cook down there. And he will check it out. And again, Dustin Jarrett's gonna talk to your top three, Larson, McDowell, and Davenport. And again, it was Marler, Madden, O'Neill, Weiss, Ford, Michael Brown, Brandon Overton in 10th, then Ross Bells, Cameron Marler, Tanner English, Benji Hicks, Tyler Millwood 15th, then Kyle Bush, Dalton Wilson, Chase Briscoe, Forrest Trent, Eli Beats, Tyler Erb, Owen Seawright, and Thornton round out your field here tonight. So you can see Ray Cook down there checking it. He's, knelled, he's kneeling down on the left side of the car. Kevin Rumley down there, and it does pass the droop check. So we're going to bring to the front straightaway race fans, your winner here tonight out of Elk Grove, California. How about it for Kyle Larson? Dustin Jarrett, when you're ready, my friend, take it away on the front straightaway. Well, thanks a lot, Ben. I'm down here. I'm down here directing traffic right now. We're going to get Kyle out here on the front straightaway. And just an absolute mob of people. Vic Hill down here, I talked to I talked to him, man, and he said, I watered the ever-loving you-know-what out of that high side of the racetrack to try to give these guys a line to run on. And what a show. What a, what a show. What a show they put on here tonight. As he climbs out of the car, let him hear you. Kyle Larson gets the win. <laughs> Holy cow. You talk about race car drivers, and we talk about guys that throw caution to the wind. You getting congratulations from Jonathan Davenport, man. It goes without saying, but tell everyone just how bad you wanted to win that race. Uh, I think with Jonathan out in front of me, it makes you want to win even more because he's, he's just so damn good. So um, what a hell of a race there. Every freaking late model race I've been in this year is, is wild and fun. So uh, what awesome track. Thanks to Vic Hill and everybody a part of this event. Thank you fans for coming out. This is a amazing turnout of people in the grandstands in the infield and the pits it's uh it's wild and i'm glad we could put on a, a good race for the fans there 50 now 50 non-stop laps so um just a, a lot of fun i knew the top was gonna be good all all night it was just you know, it just was gonna take somebody to go up there to clean it off and um told myself for the feature i was just gonna commit to it and um try and try and catch jonathan before his stick guys told tell him to move up so i uh, was able to do that and then you know, i seen his nose i was I was worried if the middle was cleaning off in three and four, and then I'd seen his nose, and uh, I made a mistake and went to the bottom to try and get by or get by a lapper, and I'd been stuck behind him for 10 or 12 laps, and uh, he ripped by me and had to get up on the wheel. Thankfully, you know my pace was still good, and, and he was you know, not running against the cushion quite you know that much in three and four, and until I started throwing some more sliders at him, and um, he just kept getting tied up there, and I could get good runs, so. I'm um, just glad that uh, I cleared him and, and glad that uh, there was no cautions that came out because I didn't know what to do if we were to get a restart. Talk about the last lap as well. You get a flat tire on this race car. Pucker factor went up maybe a little bit on that last lap, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I seen, uh, I think, you know, Kyle Bush, uh, he, I think he could tell I was coming because the flag man showed us two to go and whatnot. So he started on the bottom, and uh, I thought uh, I could get clear of him, you know, off a of two and before he came up to the top of the straightaway and just got into him and, or his right front got in my left rear and it kind of bunny hopped me up and, and I could tell something was broke or the left rear was flat and wasn't sure um, how close those guys were behind me because I felt like I the last five laps or so I kind of botched a little bit so um, just thankful that uh, there was no caution or anything like that so uh, thanks to, to Kevin Rumley flow racing uh, it's a brand new car you know, we tested a couple times with it and uh, to get a win you know, the first night out on it feels pretty pretty cool so thanks to flow racing you know Kevin Kevin King uh, James Mike uh, Jacqueline Dave everybody you know it's is um, I don't get to race a ton right now but uh, it's a lot of fun so get these next handful of weeks we get racing so excited getting the, the 57 you know next week too so make sure all the fans tune in some good good sprint car racing on Tuesday night 
Last thing, you talked about the massive crowd here in the grandstands and the folks watching at home on Flow. What do you want to say to this huge crowd that came out here to see you race tonight? Uh, just thank you guys. Thanks so much. Thanks to everybody watching on Flow too. I'm sure, I'm sure you know there's thousands and thousands of people watching on there. So um, cool to cool to put this Flow Racing car in, in the Flow Racing Victory Lane, I guess. And um, this, this, I mean, it was huge last year, this event, and I feel like it's, you know, a quarter bigger. It was already big last year, so it couldn't get much bigger, but uh, there, there seems to be more people here. So hopefully we can continue to grow this event. You know, thanks to Kyle Busch and Chase Briscoe, too, for coming out and, you know, um, trying to, trying to, figure these things out. These are the hardest cars I've ever driven, and uh, for them to just show up one night, it's, uh, it's tough, but they did a good job. Kyle got better every time he hit the track. Chase did a really good job, too, so um, look forward to hopefully getting some more uh, Cup guys out to, to try these late models, and I don't know, maybe, maybe you guys bug Flow Racing and Tony Stewart enough we can get the prelude to dream back at Eldora. How about another round of applause for Kyle Larson? <laughs> We're going to make our way through the crowd and grab a word with your second and third place finishers. Mr. Consistency does it again. Dale McDowell, slow, smooth, and steady on the bottom of the racetrack, man. Talk about what it took to get the 17M up to the second spot. Well, they wore me out watching them race really hard like they were. I just kind of uh, bided my time, tried to keep my tires under me, uh, you know, and, and they were up there racing hard. And so I was able, I just caught traffic wrong, you know, but, but I was able to run the middle down here. And, and so I think it was a, a tire management deal for me. But uh, Shane made some good adjustment on our easy go hot rod. And uh, hopefully we can, as a stepping stone for the big races coming up here. I don't want to say you had a catbird seat to that slider fest that was going on for the race lead, but uh, you certainly had to look at that and think, man, this maybe this is my opportunity to gain some ground on these guys. I did. I just couldn't drive my car quite as hard as they could. Um, you know, but it was a hell of a race up there, man. They were sliding. I did have, I was getting excited. I was missing my marks, you know, because I was eager because I thought they're going to touch in a minute and give me an opportunity, but uh, it just never happened, you know, and we caught traffic wrong. And, and uh, so it had to be a hell of a show for the race fans. And, and uh, so it's just a good night for us. What about this crowd, man? Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable, the crowd. And, uh, you know, all the people that are here supporting this thing. And, you know, it's just uh, when you go out there and see all the cars in the parking lot, it makes us proud to be a part of it. How about another round of applause for your second place finisher, Mac Daddy, Dale McDowell. And we'll grab a word down here with your third place finisher, the 49. We may need to step over here, JD. I think we might be out of range just a little bit. There we go. Grab a word with your third place finisher, Superman Jonathan Davenport. And uh, JD, talk about the race up front for the lead with Kyle Larson. Which part? Uh, hey, it was awesome. You know, we, uh, we, we took off really good there, and I was just trying to kind of ride and, and not burn up my tire because I, I kind of set up for uh, the, the middle of the racetrack down there, and I thought he he would probably be trying to rip that top that uh, Vic put up there for us, but uh, he done a good job, and we got back to him in lap traffic and got by him, and I was just too tight to run the high side there, and uh, then I kept trying to finally burn up my right rear tire and chunked it out, so then that allowed Dale to get by us, but... Uh, I was pretty nice to him a, a couple times here in one and two. I let off and let him slide me uh, across the nose. But, you know, it's just really good racing, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's just uh, appreciate the opportunity him put on this race and flow. And just thank my guys for uh, this new race car. You know, it's been really good. Uh, you know, that was a new race car he had too. So uh, Longhorn's definitely going in the right direction still. We're, we keep progressing and trying to get better. So just got to thank Nutrient Solutions, AC Warranty. Um, Diner Grow Seed, um, obviously Longhorn Cars, uh, Bill Stein Shocks. Thanks to everybody coming out. I uh, appreciate all the support I've gotten over the last week, week and a half here, but it's a big weekend for me, so uh, I get to go play in their playground the rest of the weekend. And I'll ask you the same question I asked the other two. A massive crowd here tonight at Bulls Gap, man. What do you want to say to all these fans that came out here to watch this race tonight? Yeah, just thanks for coming out for sure and, and supporting Vic and Volunteer Speedway and, uh, you know, just a short track racing in general. Thanks to everybody watching back home, and uh, we'll see you next time.
Superman Jonathan Davenport rounds out the podium in third place here tonight, guys. That is a wrap on an outstanding 50-lap super late model feature here at Volunteer Speedway. We'll send it back up top to Ben Shelton and Cody Early. Well, thank you very much, DJ. Again, congrats to Kyle Larson. Great job, Dell McDowell in second and third. What a run tonight, Jonathan Davenport. Well, again, Sportsman Features getting ready to come up. We got a lot of talented drivers in this one, so we're getting ready to throw down on that. But again, we want to thank all you race fans for spending your hard-earned money with us, for believing in us that this show would happen. Thank you to Vic Hill, Krista Hill, the entire staff here. We appreciate everybody. And right now, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Cody Early, and we're going to see if the Sportsman Crates can top what we just saw out of that super late model event. Take it away, Mr. Cody. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, we definitely have a mountain to climb. That's for sure. One of the best races here at Volunteer Speedway in a long time. We'll set the field for tonight. Sportsman late model, crate late model main event. 20 laps will be the feature. On the front row, the fastest qualifier, the driver to Whitesburg, Tennessee. He was the Back the Gap Summer Series points champion. It will be the 724 of Philip Thompson. To his outside, a previous track champion here at Volunteer Speedway out of Johnson City, Tennessee. It'll be the three of Tim Moppin. Row two in the 10B out of C more Tennessee it'll be Bradley Llewellyn and to his outside out of Andersonville Tennessee it'll be the 118 of Brody Sharp row three out of Mossside Tennessee in the 7J it'll be Aaron Jones and to his outside out of Pennington Gap Virginia it'll be the 21H of Tyler Haynes row four on the inside it'll be the 30 of Taylor Kaufman of Bean Station Tennessee and to his outside of the 7A it'll be Heath Alvey of Dandridge Tennessee row five it'll be the five of Jamie Stanley out of Coburn Virginia and to his outside it'll be the 18 out of Mohawk Tennessee Gary Crittenden. Row six would be the 07A of Addison Cardwell in Knoxville, Tennessee, and the 57 of Luke Cooper out of Woodruff, South Carolina. Inside of row number seven in the 13th starting spot out of Parrotsville, Tennessee, it'll be the 01 of Wayne Rayner, and to his outside, the 4S of Michael Smith of Rogersville, Tennessee. Inside of row number eight in the 33, it'll be Warren McMahon out of Dandridge, Tennessee, and to his outside, the 13 of Dylan Morgan out of White Pine, Tennessee. Inside of row number nine out of Fletcher, North Carolina, it'll be the 727 of Bailey Lowe, and to his outside, the two of Terry Poor of Seymour, Tennessee. Inside of row number 10, it'll be the 3S of Shane Starnes of Mossheim, Tennessee, and the 3D of Dakota James Smith of Powell, Tennessee. Inside of row number 11, it'll be the 76 of New Tasswell, Tennessee's Joe Bray. And to his outside of Mossheim, Tennessee, it'll be the four of Chase Lawson. Inside of row number 12 in the 53, out of Bulls Gap, Tennessee, it'll be Matt Barnes. And to his outside, the 11, it'll be Tim Bounds of Knoxville, Tennessee. And rounding out the field, in the two in, it'll be Nikki Starnes of Greenville, Tennessee. That will be your combo late model main event, the final feature here on this beautiful Thursday night at Volunteer Speedway. We'll work to get the front straightaway cleared out, and we will get this final feature ready to roll for our main event here this evening. Once again, race fans.
We mentioned Philip Thompson, the Back the Gap Summer Series crate late model champion. Going to see what he can do on the front row. Getting a pretty cool opportunity to be behind the wheel of Ricky Weiss's number seven car. That car went to victory lane just last weekend at Bristol Motor Speedway. Good opportunity for Phillip, but he's going to be beside a driver that has a track championship, multiple time track champion here at Volunteer Speedway, and that would be Tim Moppin. Bradley the Welling, plenty of laps here as well. And the youngster Brody Sharp, got to keep an eye on, just now starting to get his career really fired up. I would just about take anybody in those first two rows. We've got some really hard charging cars that'll be from the third row on the way back as well. 20 laps, a long time around the gap for the combo late models as we get ready for our final feature of the night. So our flagman, Wesley Womack, will give him the one-to-go indication. Next time by Volunteer Speedway, we will come to life for 20 laps with the combo late models. On the front row, Whitesburg, Tennessee's Philip Thompson. Behind him, Tim Moppin. Side by side, they'll go. Race fans, thank you so much for being with us on this Thursday night. It's time for our final feature of the night. Let's lock and load. Out of turns three and four. Creed flag in the air. Side by side, it'll be Moppin on the top side. To the bottom, Thompson, Bradley, the Welling. A brief moment, thought about going three wide. It'll be Moppin. He'll dart out to the point down the back straight away. Top three right there on your screen. Llewellyn just to the back of Thompson. Lap number one is going to go to Tim Moppin. Moppin caught the wall down the front straight away. Wow! Caught the right front on the wall. He'll slide behind Thompson. Thompson's going to take the lead, and we have piled him up in turns one and two. Caution's going to come out. Caution's going to come out here in turns one and two as we have locked him up. Good look there at Terry Poor, Joe Bray. Ryan Smith there as well. Dakota James Smith in the three car. So the caution flag will come out. We're going to swap to the red flag to try to get these cars untangled. As lap number one will be officially handed to Philip Thompson. So some heavy damage for the 3D of Dakota James Smith. Terry Poor, the blue deuce there, piled up against the inside retaining wall there in one and two. Joe Bray there in the 76. And the red flag will come out. So looking as far as cosmetic damage, the 21H of Tyler Haynes probably has the most damage other than Dakota James Smith, who sits right here on the front straightaway. The 21H of Tyler Haynes, he's going to go to the back pit area, and it looks like the Pennington Gap Virginia driver may already call it a night after one lap. Addison Cardwell was in the pit area as well in his 07A. So Joe Bray and Dakota James Smith down here in the work area. Has piled them up real fast. Did not take long down in turns one and two for the entire track to get blocked up. And that may be a break for Tim Moppin. Moppin caught the outside retaining wall there on the front straightaway and rode the front straightaway wall all the way down to turns one and two. Phillip Thompson capitalized on the bottom. But Tom Moppin was able to hold the spot because that caution flag came out. So there you see the aerial view if you're watching at home on Flow Racing. That would be the line, the Congo line leaving Volunteer Speedway. Heading towards Interstate 81 there at exit 23. And then take a look at the crowd still in the grandstands. Race fans hanging out with us tonight. Thank you so much for being with us on this Thursday night. As we work to get the lineup set back up.
So working to get the starting lineup dialed back up. Looks like it will be Moppin out front. Second tops at Bradley the Welling, third Brody Sharp, fourth Aaron Jones in that fifth spot. He's one of the drivers that would be coming from what would they call the sportsman class. When I say that, if you were with us in the opening, we mentioned a combo late models. They put the sportsman and the crates together. Made some rule changes to both of these series of cars. Last year, of course, two separate classes. Aaron Jones, one of the drivers coming from the sportsman world. And I say that because we do have sportsman late models and great late models, and they've just put them together. So they will line up in the Dixie double file, and we'll get ready to rock and roll with Moppin out front. Inside of row number two, it'll be Philip Thompson. The outside will be Bradley Llewellyn, Brody Sharp, Taylor Kaufman round out your top five. So it looks like we will be coming around. Green flag out of turn number four. We're back at it. Looking for lap number two. Three wide nearly for that third spot. It'll be Moppin into turns one and two, followed by Llewellyn. Kaufman now is going to get around sharp. He'll put the pressure on Philip Thompson. Thompson in the seven. Taylor Kaufman in the white and the blue 30. Oh, a little bit of a bobble. And that's going to stack up. Looks like fourth, fifth, and sixth. Bradley Llewellyn to the inside slide. Job Moppin. Moppin's going to come back to the field. Sell of Bradley Llewellyn. Three car race down the back straight away. Down to the bottom comes Moppin. Moppin to the inside. Llewellyn to the top side. The 10B is going to go out front. He will lead lap three. Right in the tire tracks of the top two would be Philip Thompson there in that black number seven. Top three just barely about two car lengths ahead of fourth place Kaufman. Kaufman's about to come into your picture. There he is right there on the left side of your picture in that 30. As they go back side by side in turns one and two again, Moppin and Thompson for the second spot. Kaufman watching for fourth. Kaufman back to the inside of Moppin. Moppin's there. He's going to shut the door. They make a little bit of contact off of four. They'll go nose to tail into turns one and two. Back to the top sides. Moppin here comes Kaufman back to the inside. He'll fight for the third spot down in turns three and four. Kaufman will stick a nose to the bottom. Back to the top side comes Moppin. Going to hold it, and they have drug into the mix. The 18 of Gary Crittenden, Mohawk, Tennessee, I see you. Here comes Gary Crittenden. We'll split the screen on the left, the 10B, that'll be Bradley Llewellyn. Bradley Llewellyn and the 10B showing the way. 14 laps to go, now make it 13 here at Volunteer Speedway. And I tell you what, Philip Thompson is slowly starting to run him down. That gap under one second, last time by. Split in your screen, Thompson there. There you see him in the black seven, the Ricky Weiss car. There's your eye test, says three, three car links. Now make it two, now nearly side by side off the of exit four. It's still Bradley the Welling showing the way next time by. Well, halfway home and we got a battle for the lead. Just had a dandy of a super late model race and the combo late models are starting to do the same. Back to the inside comes Thompson. Door to door off of turn number four. Bradley the Welling to the top side. Thompson back to the inside. They'll be side by side again off of turn number two. Thompson's not going to have the momentum. It'll go back to the Welling. Bradley the Welling fades to the top side. Thompson to the bottom. They'll be side by side this time at the strike. Back to the Welling. And the caution is out. Caution's going to come out as Dakota James Smith will bring the caution flag out. The driver out of Powell, Tennessee, with nine laps to go just when Bradley Llewellyn and Philip Thompson were getting ready to go after each other. The caution flag will come out and we'll rack them and stack them back up. And I tell you what, the 18 of Gary Crittenden was about ready to make some noise. He had run down Tim Moppin. Don't count the Mohawk Tennessee driver out just yet. There you get a good look at the 18 of Gary Crittenden. Quietly had crawled his way into the top five, was getting ready to make his presence known in the top three, and that caution came out. So officially 10 in, 10 to go. It'll be Bradley Llewellyn out front, Philip Thompson second, Tim Moppin third, Gary Crittenden fourth, Taylor Kaufman will go fifth, Brody Sharp sixth, Heath Alvey seventh, 
Jamie Stanley quietly hanging around there in the top 10. Luke Cooper ninth. And Terry Poor, after being involved in that pileup down there on lap one, finds himself at the tail end of the top 10. 10 in, 10 to go. Here at Volunteer Speedway in our Sportsman Crate Late Model main event. So 10 laps still remaining here in this combo late model feature. Bradley Llewellyn started in the third starting spot on the inside of row number two, finds himself out to the point ahead of our pole sitter, Philip Thompson. One to go, gonna be given next time by, we'll get ready to rock and roll. It will be single file. So Bradley Llewellyn will have the command of the point. We'll see him come to life out of turn number four. Tell you what, if you're going to be at the tail end of the line right now, you're going to be close to going a lap down as the, they will crawl their way down into three and four. Bradley Llewellyn back on a loud pedal creek flag. Kaufman look to the inside of Critton and they'll fall back in line. Single file, they'll dive down into turns one and two. Good run off of turn number two for Thompson, about three car lengths. He'll cut that down to about two, down into center of three and four, back up to the top side. Nine laps to go, Bradley Llewellyn showing the way. Inside is Crittenden, top side is Moppin. Moppin's gonna get a run for third. They'll go side by side, Moppin back to the inside of Crittenden. That is two regulars at the Volunteer Speedway going at it for a podium finish. Wow, Crittenden might have lifted the wheels of the three car off the bottom and Taylor Kaufman says, you know what, you two fight it out. I'm gonna take the spot from you both. Kaufman will slide back in line. He'll go off the nose of Crittenden. In the meantime, it is still Bradley Llewellyn out front, seven laps to go, and Philip Thompson is starting to reel him in. There you see it, a car length on your screen. If you're watching at home on Flow Racing, Thompson back to the inside, almost side by side in the exit off of four. They'll cross the strike, six laps to go at Volunteer Speedway. Oh, baby, side by side again. Thompson to the inside, Bradley Llewellyn to the outside. Off a of turn number four, it'll be Thompson inside. Llewellyn, Thompson, man, he might have caught the wall. Llewellyn might have caught, oh, he turned him. He turned him around. Caution comes out, Llewellyn around, Thompson around, and the caution flag will come out down in turns one and two. The spring rhythm caution flag will come out down in turns one and two. And it looks like both drivers are moving. So a hard hit for the top two down in turns one and two. They had just got side by side the exit off of four. Of course, one way communication, race control, that's it. That's all these drivers have in their ears. There's no mirrors, there's no spotters. It's all by feel. And unfortunately, two tore up race cars down here in turns one and two. And that will turn the attention Back to Tim Moppin, Taylor Kaufman, and Gary Crittenden, who will now take over the top three spots. So Philip Thompson will take his seven car down to the infield to the attention of the crew. And there you see Bradley Llewellyn, if you're looking on your screen, that 10B car, man, hard hit from both of them. Thought there for a second, he might've got hung up on the fence over there in turn number one, but the car come off the fence, looked like he rolled it away. 
But unfortunately, he's going to go on the hook. Philip Thompson has got his seven car pulled to the infield. Take a look at the winter's performance drone shot of the fans leaving Volunteer Speedway. Tell you what, most cars I have seen in this facility in a long time. Didn't think we'd be able to squeeze everybody in somehow, some way. We got everybody in here. We hope everybody has enjoyed themselves and you have a safe trip out of the Volunteer Speedway this evening. You're heading up to Bristol. Full weekend of racing action. Looks like weather may fare actually pretty good this weekend once they get to Sunday at least. So if you're heading that way, Hope you have a good, safe trip, and welcome to East Tennessee. If it's your first, how many folks are here at Volunteer Speedway for the very first time? All right. Raise your hand if you're coming back to Volunteer Speedway for a second time. That's what we like to see. So Bradley Welling's going to come off the racing surface, and we'll get ready to get our combo late models back going with six laps remaining, six laps still to go here in this feature. So Johnson City, Tennessee's Tim Moppin going to inherit the lead in front of the former asphalt late model driver. That's right. We mentioned earlier in hot laps, Taylor Kaufman will, as of right now, will go down as the final asphalt late model track champion at Volunteer Speedway or at, at Newport Speedway. Yeah, last asphalt late model champion to be at Newport Speedway if that holds true. He'll go to second. Be a huge night for that 30 car if he can find his way around the three. Gary Crinton, wily veteran. He's got victories, plenty of them here at the Gap. And slowly but surely, we've started to bring Coburn, Virginia's Jamie Stanley into the picture. He'll set right there in the fourth spot in that blue five. And Heath Alvey, he'll set in the fifth spot as we have six laps to go. They'll go one to go this time by Volunteer Speedway. Six laps remaining in our combo late model main event of the night.
So Tim Moppin will lead him down into turns three and four. Six laps to decide the final feature of the night. Green flag is out. Moppin off a of turn number four will cross the strike with Kaufman, with Crittenden, and Stanley in tow. They go almost three wide for second. Heath Alvey's going to watch those three battle it out. He's going to chase after Stanley. Second, third, fourth, and fifth all right there together, right behind Moppin as we're going to spin around. The 727 out of turn number four caution is going to come out for Bailey Lowe. Bailey Lowe will go around. Also, the 01 of Wayne Raider did not get a lap complete, so we stay at that six to go mark. It has been a rough night for Wayne Raider here at the Gap. Started out, looped around over there in turn three and hit the wall in hot laps. Crew went to work on that car, finally got it straightened back out. And right now he sets pinned up against the inside retaining wall in turn four now. So lineup rule, good. They'll line it back up the way they were and get ready to come at it again. So we stand at six laps complete. That'll be the second time. We mentioned second time of the night. Raiders had to be pulled away from an inside wall. So they will work to pull the 0-1 away from the infield retaining wall. 727 of Bailey Lowe looks like he has gathered back up. He'll go back to the tail end of the field. Once again, still no lap scored, so we stay at that six to go mark. So they will pull Raiders car away from the infield wall. And unfortunately, it looks like that Hux Motorsports machine going to go to the infield. And the first race of the 2023 season for Wayne Raider, unfortunately, going to end on the hook. As there you see the Hux Motorsports Team Husky Competition Racing Equipment 01. So there you see the top three. It'll be Tim Moppin, Taylor Kaufman, Gary Crittenden, Jamie Stanley closing into that picture in that fifth spot. Still six laps to decide it here in this combo late model feature. There's one to go being given by the flagman, Wesley Womack. He'll give him one to go next time by out of turn number four. We'll try to settle it. Still six laps on the board and a $1,000 payday for the first official combo late model feature of the 2023 season. Tell you what, don't count out that seven car right back there in that fifth spot. If they get to racing in the top four, Heath Alvey can make some noise. Green flag out of turn number four. Much better restart for Taylor Kaufman. He'll be in the tire tracks of Moppin going into turns one and two. Down to the bottom, Stanley, top side, Crittenden. Good run off of turn number two. Once again, a car link will separate Kaufman from Moppin into turns three and four. Stanley will go side by side with Crittenden. That's for the third and final podium spot. There you get a good look at the 18 of Crittenden, the five of Stanley. Heath Alvey there in that fifth spot, but it is all Tim Moppin right now coming to four. Oh, and trouble, trouble for Crittenden. Gary Crittenden's come up slow on the back straightaway. He's going to make the hard left-hand turn as they cross the strike. Four laps to go at Volunteer Speedway for Tim Moppin. Driving the orange and white blue colors similar to Dale Ball's race car. Trying to make his way around the Volunteer Speedway. It's been a while since we got the three car of Moppin in victory lane. This time by, they'll come off a of turn number four. They'll see two laps to go. Two laps at Volunteer Speedway for Tim Moppin. Down into one and two, pretty solid. Kaufman will stay in the tire tracks. Three car lengths that time by. They'll go into three and four. White flag gonna fly final time around the Volunteer Speedway for Tim Moppin. Inherited the lead after the incident down in turns one and two from Bradley Llewelling and Philip Thompson. And down into the back straightaway in turns three and four. Hunting for a win. Kaufman will throw it down low. He's not going to make it happen. And out of turn number four, Johnson City, Tennessee's Tim Moppin will win at the gap. Second will go to Taylor Kaufman. Third's going to go to Jamie Stanley. Fourth will go to Heath Alvey. And Brody Sharp 
will round out your top five. Volunteer Speedway, make some noise for Johnson City, Tennessee's Tim Moppin. Once again, race fans, on behalf of Vic Hill and the entire team here at Volunteer Speedway, for everyone that joined us, we thank you so much for being a part of the second annual Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge presented by Flow Racing here at Volunteer Speedway. Patsy Dillon, Patsy Dillon, we need you to the tower. Patsy Dillon, you, we need you to the tower.